Get ready for the only podcast proven to control tartar and fight gingivitis. Nobody likes onions. Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Can you believe that there's still like two weeks of this month left over? I don't know how we're going to survive. Happy birthday. Listen to my voice. If anybody needs a break, it's me. Jesus Christ. This week was fucking insane. Uh, happy birthday to Dirty Dalish. We're calling it D Day. Oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dalish. Happy birthday to you. You've journeyed 8,760 days to be here in this exact moment. Have an amazing day. Love you, darling. That's from David Attenborough. How many people get a birthday wish from David Attenborough? Bruh, bruh, bruh. Yeah, I printed out a cupcake and a balloon. It's festive. Sorry, it's all the time we had to decorate. It's the end of the week. I don't have any stuff. Patrick's intro music makes me feel like I'm selecting which car to use in Need for Speed 2. It was actually copied off. I had this song made, and I was going for a certain feel. Kind of like, yeah, like a menu screen on an old PlayStation 2 game. I want you to think this is coming off a Sega CD. If the police saw that room, they'd think you're a serial killer posting the names of your victims on the wall. Stupid spell check, Danish. Oh, I thought I, I thought I fucked up. And by the way, did you see these photos that she posted in the uh, steel toe hoodie? You know, if you can't jerk to that, I don't know what's wrong with your penis. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know what's wrong with your penis. I've seen the pictures. Mangled. A little over to the side. Dirty Dalish, She's uh, if you don't know her, she's a, a young lady with an OnlyFans account. She dresses up like an elf. I don't know if it's one of the good elves or one of the bad. One of the good elves would be like one of the elves that has like, you know, glitter all over her titties and stuff. One of the bad elves would be like her whole vagina is full of Keebler fudge because she never learned to not wipe back to front. (laughs) That'd be the worst kind of elf. The elf that never learned to wipe properly. (laughs) Keebler fudge. Come on! Yeah, people are saying she makes the merch look good. Ian Hawk took a photo in one of the uh, steel toe hoodies. Uh, Spaghetti Tooth John took a photo in a steel tooth shirt. Oh my God. I just can't wake up today. I just can't even wake up today. Can we just cancel the show? Can we just go back and pretend it's starting again? I don't need to be here. It's a Friday. Why don't you learn to to take care of yourselves? You know what I mean? Jesus. Why do you need me? Every morning, every morning you need this with the waking up and the talking. 
I'm going to tell you what, uh, members only chat today. We're also going to, uh, last couple hours of the show today are going to be members only. So why not pull the trigger now? $199, $1.99. Pull the trigger now. Hit that join button. Kyle Anderson says the only elf he jerks to is Dobby. Whisk dances in air, swiftly stirring symphony, whirling joyfully, dirty Dalish smiles, nature's child, wild and free, earth's spirit in her. Have a wonderful day, darling. All the onions have fallen in love with you. I hope you aren't AI. All the onions have fallen in love with you. Oh my God, to be embraced by a community. Can I, oh, I think I've, I think I really drove off our, our Discord admin, Sir Vosef. I think I might have really upset him yesterday. He hasn't posted in the Discord since he, since the show yesterday when the stats broke. By the way, he built the whole stats thing. It's amazing. And I think we may, me, I may have put too much pressure on him. You know, it's trying to freak out and be funny on the show yesterday, but I think he might have taken it to heart. You know what I was screaming about? We got to get this fixed. This is fucking bullshit. You know, I think he like might have took that on himself a little too hard. Um, Because he like said in our, we have a private, you know, chat for the Discord admins. And he was like, I don't have time for this anymore. I can't. I, I hope, I hope he's okay. I hope I really didn't drive a man away by an online rant. These online rants, guys, these are just show fillers. Only if I rant at you offline. Is that a real rant? Please distinguish my rants. Um, yeah, well, you can send your birthday poetry into Dalish. Kyle Anderson loves it. Oh, God, I'm a little stuffy. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Good luck finding another Moody who will work for free while being mock abused, says beloved chatter. And that's a good point. That's a good point. No, look, I couldn't have paid this guy enough for what he did. He he set up the discord and stuff. I, I wouldn't blame him if he's like, all right, I've had enough of this. Um, I hope he's fine. I hope we're all good, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the stats thing. So we won't have uh misery love stats until we know. That that's working or we're not quite sure what's wrong with it and it's above my pay grade i don't get down and messy with the code anymore you know i don't know what's going on the colt c rant was real to me yeah that's why he's banned and never allowed in here again that's why we and anybody if he comes in the chat we ignore him and we don't talk to him because it was so real <laughs> None of this is real if you're watching this on a YouTube channel. Um, so just recalibrate. Get adjusted. And if you see Sir Vosef, tell him thank you for your service. We understand if he wants to step down. Um, I think he built all the uh, bots and stuff around his personal if this, then that channel. So that'll probably all break when he storms off. <laughs> so I don't know. But I don't know how Discord works. And uh, I wasn't part of any discords until a couple weeks ago anyway. So imagine if it all goes away. I'll probably just tremble and turn into dust. But um, also probably not, you know. I saw a picture of you in your 20s, Melton. You was handsome. Put down the McMuffin and get on the elliptical machine. Don't give up. I don't do the elliptical. I don't like those ellipticals. They say it's a low impact Workout, but if you've ever seen me on one, it has a significant impact. Um, mostly in my ability to breathe. So, believe it or not, this is the healthiest I've ever been, and we're just going to march on towards the sun. Tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do what we call the NLO Smoke Show, where I'll be smoking a barbecue pulled pork shoulder. If you have a barbecue, if you have a smoker, you want to grill out with us, we'd love for you to cook out with us. I invested. I've got $500 worth of equipment showing up today to do an outdoor broadcast. I don't know how that's going to go. I, I don't know how it's we're going to set it up. Um, 
I'm going to try to do a couple cameras on the grill, a camera on the table where I'm prepping and uh, sitting for most of the cook. We're going to go over some barbecuing tips. We'll talk about your stuff. It'll be a long, it'll be a long, long show. Probably, who knows, six to eight hours. We'll smoke this pork. We'll show you what it's going to look like. Um, NLO fat camp this summer. I'll be flying to Austin, so I'll get my smoked meats once I land. Someone's a big fan of meat. Who's not a fan of meat? Are you not a fan? Ah, oh, fuck. We missed it. We missed the toe launch this morning. I'm over here babbling about pork and porn. Would do. Are you saying El Harible can't get his own ladies? <laughs> Look. Shots fired. I'm I'm just saying that a lot of people in that podcasting universe do not look like the crushing pussy type. Oh. That's all. Okay. I'm not not bad people. I understand. Not, not terrible. Does he people. even have any ounce of self-awareness? As if Aaron seems like the crushing pussy type. You know, he looks like the kind of guy who sleeps in a separate bed than April. But uh, the, uh, that, uh, the st- what do they call it? The, nope, the, da- the, it. the dabble verse is not sending its best. <laughs> what okay? do you call it? <laughs> some of them are rapists. Some of them are murderers. I'm sure some of them are good people. Probably not. Uh, Raymond B says, support the new age radio shows. I'm very, I, I'm at peace with that phrase. I'm okay with that. We are. Patrick, do the cookout shirtless. I like that. You should have a camera in the laundry room for when you have the, to season the meat. This is what uh, the shows should be. Oh no, boy. Like, what? Thing? Why would I season my meat in my laundry room? Do I even want to know? With the other one. It should be, um, hey, let's, here's the bunch of senior citizens fighting with each other. Let's laugh about that once in a while. That's kind of fun. But also, it should be, hey, let's keep the shit moving. This this ain't brain surgery. People are going to work. People are getting through a shitty work day. Let's make, you got to think about it. Let's make more than half of it go by really fast. Right, we're in that People are calling calling out April, really faking her cleavage, pushing together those bee stings. Let's make your work day go as fast as possible. I don't care. I'm not like a, I mean, I'm good with any tits. I'm not like a big, uh. I don't need you to have big old Harvey hangers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> have now been made either troll Cheeto dust people or just completely miserable because they've decided to make this their life. This oh, is, yeah. hey, you guys are at work. You want to kill some? By the way, look how much shittier his shirt looks. You can tell that's like an iron on patch. Look at it glimmering in the light. The trick of OnlyFans is the real question. See, now that would be too fucking cute. I would never leave OnlyFans if there was a potato. I doing would an die. OnlyFans. I'm picturing him as having like those rain frog butts. It's somehow lower quality and shittier than the ones I sold. Like, how is that even possible? Look how crappy that looks. Rub your clit with this melon baller. Oh. I would love that. He's just a little potato, and the little potato is in the corner telling the woman what to do with all. The, and there's like a a dresser full of toys. Really? And she's out on a bed, and the potato is just going. I wonder if she could fit her whole fist up her ass. Oh, <laughs> she's got some nice perky ones. Do potatoes have ass? So I mean, we're five minutes in, and we've talked about the R word, forcing ourselves on women. Yeah, the merit rook, ass play, pig and play. Robin Williams character in Law and Order SV. Most of today is KC. By the way, I'm sorry, Dirty Dalish. We got uh, one of the most amazing KC shows last night. I can't even tease it. I didn't watch it all because I was like, there's no point. I have to break this down in real time um, for the people. So we will be going over that today. I can't believe you left it up, but why wouldn't you? That I'm dealing with today. I don't mean to brag, uh, but this actually isn't a brag. Uh, I pulled a tard move yesterday. I have a very sore, inflexible thumb as I jammed it and kind of sprained it last night. So far up your ass. I shoved it up my own asshole. Uh, I I was sparring. Uh, these kids are getting better, so I got to give it a little more juice because sure. they're they're on you. And uh, one of them, I was giving them a little one, one, two. I, I there once was a girl, Dirty Dalish, with a spirit bold and quite lavish, covered in dirt and grime. She'd laugh and have a good time. Her adventurous spirit was truly outlandish, wishing you a day as wild as your spirit, full of laughter and fun. That's great. Look at these... Uh... AI wishes coming in. And if that's not enough, 
Today it's Friday. We're going to have an art contest today. Let's bring it back to the fun stuff. We didn't do one last weekend. Um, the cupcake on the wall was special enough for me. No, we're going to have people design today's art project design. And you can post these in the Discord or you can post them uh, to my email. Just shoot me an email, Patrick, at nobodylikesonions.com. Um, birthday cards for Dirty Dalish. Birthday cards. Elvin Papercraft Whimsy is what we're looking for here today, okay? We're looking for birthday cards for Dirty Dalish. You're getting no guidance on what that means. There's no direction I'm going to send you off in. And boy, if you think we haven't already received five this morning, then you're crazy. Uh, whatever you think Dirty Dalish would want for a birthday card, send it in. You can design just the front. You can design the inside. Whatever you want, an e-card, if you will. For Dirty Dalish. We'll be showing these at the end of the show today in the 7 o'clock hour. And uh, we'll let Dirty Dalish pick a winner. And we'll let uh, that person then pick a reward from my brain. Uh, happy Forget Ian Hawk's Contribution Day. I agree. We should not even utter Ian Hawk's name again today. Aaron, you have to do an entertaining show, B Dabbler. Also, Aaron, here's another amateur boxing story. I mean, it's just like when Aaron talks about crushing pussy and stuff. It's like, okay. Let's go. Brandon just updated their uh, YouTube membership to Podcuck, which is our highest level. We only have about four or five Podcucks. I think it's 25 bucks a month for the membership channel here. Um, you know, most of you are too poor to do it. I understand. Let's go. Brandon is, uh, a rich guy and now he's a podcuck level man. Um, so let's get it popping. Dirty Dalish has going to be so many whisks. So just imagine whatever you want to draw on that. Pat, did you hear about Shuli's producer getting arrested? I mean, you're saying that like it just happened last night and he's currently sitting in a cell. Yeah, there's a video of Shuli's producer, I guess, like yelling in a hospital at some hospital workers. I'm not quite sure what's going on in it. And to be honest, I watched the video. I don't even really have that much of a problem with anything in the video. Was that what he got arrested for? Standing up in a hospital and saying, uh, stop shushing me? I checked out Dirty Dalish's OnlyFans, and boy, I'm just slipping out of my chair this morning. That girl got me snail trailing all over the lake. Ugh. I would take her to the lake and drink espresso martinis all night long. This is my elven magic. Um, there's absolutely nothing you guys get for my B day. Well, you know, if we if you bring it to our attention well enough in advance, Mikey, we're happy to. People get mad at me because I don't like message them on their birthday. It's like I don't know anybody's birthday. I don't want people messaging me on my birthday, you know? I locked down my Facebook. You can't post happy birthday on my wall. First of all, I don't go on Facebook. If I have one more friend or family get upset at me, like you didn't comment on my post. It's like, I didn't see it. I don't go on Facebook. Imagine having the audacity to get mad at someone because they didn't comment on your post. Oh, I'm sorry. What a needy little bitch are you? Jesus Christ. Not all of us are just scrolling on Facebook all day. Just doom scrolling to eternity. Okay? Get a get a life. Get a plunger and unclog your brain. No, just the hospital video. People found the police report about him threatening his neighbor where they got not just the hospital video. People found a police report about him threatening his neighbor where they got this is all badass to me. To me, it looks like a chemo center, and he was being loud. Yeah, I just think it looked cool. I saw the mugshot, Brevard County, Florida. We've all seen the Hillsborough County Chad mugshot. You know, the lesson I'm learning is don't get arrested in Florida. Or your mugshot shall be adorned across the Internet. Florida's got it like that, you know? 
No, if there's a police report or something I need to see, send it in. Again, I'm not really like totally familiar in it. And uh, for the most part, we like Joe, but I'd be all about taking him down. If we need to bring Joe down a peg today, you let me know. Ian Hawk trying to make a big difference today. Five gifted memberships from Ian Hawk. Look at this guy. Not to be outdone on Durley, Dur Durley Day Dishes. Durley Day Dish. Not to be outdone by Ian Hawk today. Um, or sorry, not to be outdone by Dirty Dailish today. Ian Hawk's going to keep his name in the forefront of our memories uh, by giving five memberships. And I think we're, God, it fucking rolled again last night. So I think we're like 20 memberships away again. But that'll be, five, that'll be 15. You know, it rolls every day. Oh, God, I'm like fucking allergies i'm supposed to wake up every morning and take a zyrtec and i don't you know and uh oh my eyes are just it's that time of the year here in vegas where the pollen and the dust are just rolling off the mountaintops all right five memberships for me and hawk that's great thank you very much Big show today. We got a lot of stuff. We have a, an exclusive tour behind the scenes of the Compound Media Studios. This might have gone uh, unnoticed by a lot of people, but it was posted by Jim Stance, Stancelman. Um, Don't worry. Uh, that, uh, what, what do you call that, whirlpool in the uh, river of time mm -hmm. has been closed. Uh, we have confirmation that that was not exactly the story that was presented okay, to us. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. So I yes. So the title of today's Steel Toast Show is Aaron was wrong and whisk me, baby. Uh, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. Oh 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 oh. Good good good. Yeah. Whisk 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 whisk. Yeah. Oh good good good. Today's uh uh show is called Aaron was wrong and Aaron was right. I mean. What is it like? How exhausting is it every day for Aaron to wake up and go, "What? Uh, what's happening out there in the world? How can I spin it into me being right? How can I? How can I uh, spin it all into? How can I spin whatever's happening today into Aaron being some prescient, omnipotent being that sees everything coming down the pike? How can I fucking spin it today?" Zyrtec is an anti-psychosis drug that they decide to use for allergy. Well, then I'm not psychotic, and I um, don't have the sniffles. Just heard Ian Hawk has started an OnlyFans in order to uh, wrest the last bit of attention away from Dirty Dalish on her birthday. Which I believe that's fucked up. Producer Joe got a little loud and gave a pe people a piece of his mind. Isn't that why everyone liked him? Yeah, I mean, look. The video in the old people's home was kind of funny to me. I didn't even, like... Believe me, old people annoy the fuck out of me. Sometimes old people act like like everyone's supposed to get out of their way because they're old and they made it this far. It's like, come on, you old piece of shit. Uh, fuck, I feel like that one day where there was damn near 100 gifted subs when 30 days from that rolls around, you're going to be around 399 subs. I Yeah, I don't know when that was. I don't really track it or anything. It's just cool to, like, stay around 500. That'd be cool. Patrick, take a 420 bong rip. Go green mode. I don't even have a bong in the studio. Um, But you do it. It's your birthday. It's all about you. Rip a bong if you want it. Smash a bong if you want. You can smash if you want to. You can leave your bong behind. Because if you get high, then we'll all get high and we can go. Look at your birthday cards later. Patrick will take a Sudafed, and in 30 minutes, your nose will be back to normal. I don't have any Sudafed. Somebody mail me Sudafed, guys. Did you know we have a P.O. box? You can send in your Sudafeds. We'd love for you to send in your Sudafed over to Patrick Melton. Nobody likes onions. 4948 Mountain Vista Street, number 13932, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89121. Send in your stuff. Send in your weird stuff. Send in your weird, weird stuff. And by the way, I think we're going to start our, our... Proceed with caution, Patrick. This Casey Armstrong is an animal. Bad shoulder or not, he will confront you face-to-face. -face. Ask him to tell him what you said on the air to his face, and he will shake your hand and say, 
Good luck to you. Yeah. Scary shit, my friend. I heard that. I heard that. I heard him last night say, like, one day he's going to see me to my face and he's going to have to deal with it. And then his guy was like, uh, oh, we'll get into the, we got to get into the Casey interview. I think it's got to be most of today. You know, it's not like I want to spend three hours on Casey Armstrong, but I think we have to today. Is that okay with the chat? Are we okay with that if we spent three hours on Casey Armstrong today for our Friday? Or is that too exhausting? I think it's a great way to go into the weekend with a smile. I think it's a great way to go into the weekend with a laugh. Producer Joe was arrested for menacing his neighbor with a handgun, the same 77-year-old neighbor who had prior to that beaten his ass. Felony aggravated assault on a person over 65. That's cool. That's cool to me. If an old man beat my ass, I'd probably pull a gun on him too. You wouldn't? Can't blame Joe. He needs the gun. He got his ass kicked by an old. If you get your ass kicked by an old, you better get a gun. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Okay? Citizen M took a small part of what I said in the Discord and let me know a thing or two about uh, how he knew about producer Joe being a psychopath from day one. I don't know what that means. Respectfully, you could not be more wrong with the video of producer Joe. I assume this is all crosstalk. Imagine I, I, I couldn't be more wrong or more right because I don't know what's going on. Uh, if somebody wants to send in like a detailed, you know, couple send in summary of what's going on with links to any videos or websites or mug shots or police reports or interviews with old men that we need to look at, please send that in. Um, Casey's the only intriguing drama these days. Nothing brings me more joy than that at the moment. Uh, three hours of the KC as long as you keep it moving. Oh, well, I didn't know there were stipulations on it. You know. When is the Mersh stuff? You mentioned you had some stuff on him. Uh, we did that yesterday with uh, Simcast. God, no, not three hours. I can barely stand the one hour you've been doing. Well, Josie, come on, get it together. Casey was one of the Stern staff worried about going postal one day. Good, good. We need headlines. I'm trying to pick reactive people. You know, I need him to bust a nut. I'm surprised you even did a show today after the beating you took on Casey's show. All those fat onion slams were vicious. Ian Hawk gifted me a membership, and I will be renewing it when it expires on June 5th. Thanks, Ian, and happy birthday to the hot chick with the elf ears. Oh, is it also some hot chick's birthday today besides Dirty Dalish? <laughs> ah, that was me calling you ugly, you old bitch! Boom! Okay. Just a joke, just a joke. We all know that um, everybody's attractive. All I care is $75. Don't. Let me forget today. We got to get to the $75. Casey had a writing assignment from the first grade where he wrote about getting drunk, chopping up a frog, and vacuuming it. Oh, boy. This is more embarrassing than the time I came under that desk repeatedly and the movers found all my cum stalactites hanging from an old Ikea desk. All right, so it looks like we'll do KC today uh, for the most part. I imagine we have to talk a little bit about the MLC and Chad stuff. Look, the Chad stuff's getting really ugly, and uh, um, he's just victiming so hard about everything, and I don't want – I just – I think I'm going to say I don't want any more entanglement with Chad, so we're probably going to not – comment or really look some stuff we have to comment about with chad like yesterday's show we're going to talk about what he did um but i'm done with chad like trying to twist all my words into like me attacking poor chad it's like enough and i want to make it very clear fuck chad <laughs> um but i'm not gonna let him use things i say anymore as um, imaginary enemies and straw men for him to be like, Melton's doing this to me. Melton's doing that to me. Ah! I never heard a mud shark. You know, I've never seen a mud shark at the complaint department so much. 
Imagine a mud shark filing this much paperwork about being wronged. So I'm going to try to not talk in any sort of derogatory or judgmental ways about Chad. That's going to be difficult. The stuff I with Cardiff and lording doxing people over them is fucking gross. It's sad more than anything. It's like what what Chad's doing is fucking sad. And it's what it's the main reason like I don't want to be associated with and this, by the way, Kevin does it too. Gino does it too. I get it. I'm not, you know. I'm not saying Chad's the only one who does that stuff. It's all fucking retarded. You know, giving out someone's number and address and information and all that stuff is both disgusting and also stupid. It's like everyone has my number and address. <laughs> and if you don't, you can get it. I've had the same phone number for 17 years. You can get it. People from the podcast were prank calling my phone number in 2006. I have the same number. So go for it. It's very easy to block people or ignore people or turn your phone off for a day. Like, I, I don't give a shit. So it's simultaneously both, you know, disgusting that you would share somebody's personal information, but also like, now what? There is a reason Chad's not giving out Cardiff information. Uh, I imagine when he does give it out, it'll it'll make this sound around the internet. Same sound my dog makes when she farts. And I look over like, is that a fart? It's nothing. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to dox the, nobody's going to go after the potato. You know, the whole point of doxing is like, you have a bunch of people who want the information and they're going to hurt the guy. Nobody's going to hurt the potato. Nobody's after the potato. Yay! So he releases the information and it just is, it's a dud. Nobody cares. And then he has nothing. Chad's power is, what's he going to do? Chad's whole power is, what's he going to do? He's a mud shark. He's unpredictable. But the fact is, he rarely does anything. He rarely does anything. If he, if somebody waves around a gun in a store, they're scary. The minute they pull the trigger and a rubber bullet just pff, peters out of the top, you know, like me coming all over my belly button. <laughs> you know, the minute you do that, it's sad and embarrassing. You're like, oh, that's what the gun does? <laughs> all right, anyway, back to business. And the customers just start shopping again for day-old donuts. So Chad can't fire the gun because the gun's effectively shooting blanks. But as long as he just waves the gun around, everybody's like tuning in to go, what's, what's the maniac with the gun going to do? It's like, well, he's either going to just give out a potato's phone number and name or nothing. And when you boil those two down and reduce the fractions, it's both nothing. Chad was scared of KB destroying him. That's why he didn't go on yesterday. So, yeah, yesterday, um, KB couldn't get anybody on the show. He was sending me link to come on the show. I don't go on shows last minute for the most part. I'm not sitting around at home going like, someone send me a link. Um, So I'm not rushing over there to jump on it. And then it gets to the point where KB, who now is at a full-blown screaming match, not talking to, not working with Bob Levy. You know, Bob Levy wasn't on MLC yesterday after Kevin lost it on him the day before. So now people are wondering, well, Kevin... Will Bob Levy ever be back on MLC? And now that Bob's gone, Kevin had this guy on I've never even seen before, some complete bore fest. And they tried, like, talking about sports for 10 minutes. And then, of course, it just evolved into KB yelling. And KB, while his guest is on, just screaming, 
I've sent the link to so many good people. Why will nobody good come on? You know, literally insulting his guest. So funny, by the way. So funny. Incorrect. You know, I don't know who that guy is, but. It's the same reason I don't go on every day. What am I? I'm going to be. You can't go on with KB and not be. That's the job. Stand next to KB and look like shit. So, no, Levy didn't quit MLC. I'm guessing Kevin didn't send him a link. Kevin didn't invite him on. And Kevin gets Stevie Lou on. Stevie Lou, one of, one of Stevie Lou's most embarrassing performances. People were saying yesterday in our Discord, Stevie Lou's trying so hard to get the position as third mic, but Stevie, you don't want that. You don't want that. You know, the fake laughing, everything Kevin was saying yesterday, Stevie Lou was like, oh, God, you tell him, KB, you tell him. It was too much. Too much fake laughing, too crazy. Wrap it up. Stevie Lou is a third square. You know, he's out of options. He's always, look, he's been on the show before. But yesterday was just pandering laughing too hard at stuff i i it made me ill to my stomach to watch cardiff doesn't have the balls to self dox he thinks there's a possibility chad won't one day become angry about something else and impulsively leak the info yeah i mean look i'm gonna be honest i was kind of talking with the potato a little bit and um everything was kind of fine and then I was asking him some other stuff, and he kind of went radio silent on me. And this is after Chad and him came to the agreement. So I think that's real. Chad blackmailed this dude who has his reasons. He doesn't want his information out there, and it's more valuable to him to just shut the fuck up. Chad's got him over a barrel, essentially, a potato barrel. That's what it seems like. It seems like this guy is just going to shut the fuck up so Chad doesn't give out his info. Let me tell you how that's going to go. Fine for a little bit, and Chad will still give out your info. Maybe, you know. Like, he's already talked, Chad's already talking about, like, using it to also blackmail Carl from Who Are These Podcasts and never mentioning him again, or he's going to release the potatoes info. So it's like, okay. So I guess the potatoes done talking about Chad. Um, That's really going to happen. No one really cares if he doxes him. If the people screw with his job, then the company sucks if they fire him over this BS. I had a great time. It is what it is. Yeah, no one's doubting you had a great time. We're just asking. Stevie, every time you're on a show, we... we I don't know how to say this diplomatically. Every time you're on a show, it seems like you're not really on the show. Does that make sense? You're like in your own little world, having your own little show. And you're kind of tuned out to everything going on. Kevin and Bob really went at it last Friday. I wondered if there's going to be fallout. It was kind of ugly, really. What are you talking about? Catch up. It was Wednesday that caused all this. I mean, Wednesday, he was screaming at Bob. Last Friday, catch the fuck up. You think last Friday was the impetus for this disconnect here? And then they just hung out Monday for fun and Tuesday for fun and Wednesday for fun. No, it was Wednesday that brought all this to a head. When you're doing a show, the point is uh, it's supposed to be fun for the audience, not the host. The potato is getting government money. He's not going to risk that gravy train. Look, I don't know if that's true or not, but that is that could be one reason you wouldn't want your information out there. You're making good money off YouTube and you don't want to report it. Um, is blackmail illegal? You're goddamn right it is. Extortion? <laughs> uh, Stevie Lou, you fucking rot. You're not even a has-been. You are a been. Okay, be nice. You know, there's a nice way. Um, no, this is going to go over Stevie's head. He's too dumb to understand. I, look, I believe it'll go over his head. I don't think, I don't know if he's dumb. <laughs> But Stevie's not clued. Oh, my allergies today are fucked. It really is a uh, heavy pollen day. What's the air quality like in Vegas? Somebody look it up. So, 
Kevin with Stevie Lou and some other guy. It was mostly just Kevin screaming, you know, which is what MLC is. Chad gets sent a link to join Kevin and is now look, I'm going to, I'm going to call it like I see it. This isn't, we're no longer talking shit about Chad. We're just kind of reporting and giving our take. It's going to be neutral. I'm going to call it like I see it. I, by the way, somebody was like taking shots of our discord and like posting it up. Like, don't trust Melton Chad. I assume Chad's in the discord reading everything I say. Do you think I'm saying things that I wouldn't say to Chad's face? He doesn't listen. He's making mistakes. I've tried to give him advice. He is acting like Ray. I'd say all this to his face. I'd say all this to him on the phone if he called in. So you're not getting me. I assume Chad's reading everything I type. Do you think I'm having secret discussions in my Discord? And I'm like, oh, I hope no one screenshots this. It's like, no, I assume everything is public and that Chad is in there. Uh, Patrick, will you let me speak? Patrick, I can't get my point out. Oh, no, Patrick, he said one sentence. I have no voice, Stevie Lou. Yeah, I mean, yesterday on the phone, Stevie Lou wouldn't let anyone else talk and kept screaming about how he doesn't get to talk. It's like, you're broken. Chad pushed out. He uh, he had a chance. Yeah, I think he should have gone on. I think a lot of times these guys in the moment panic and have really bad comedy instincts. There were a million ways Chad could have gone out M on MLC and and screwed with Kevin. There was a million ways Chad could have gone on MLC and tried to just get back in Kevin's good graces. I, in my opinion, it is still what Chad wants. Chad wants to be part of MLC. Without MLC, he doesn't really have cornerstone content. He doesn't really have, you know, that is his home base. He wants to be part of MLC. So who knows? Maybe there's a path back for that now. If Bob's off, I, I don't know what's happening. And maybe this is just how it goes. You know, Chad goes back on. Chad talks him into getting Bob back on. Bob comes back on. They get tired of Chad again, kick Chad off again. It's like maybe that's just what it is from now on. An endless cycle of abuse, you know. I once posted a positive comment after I first heard Stevie Lou. Can you imagine how embarrassed I am right now? Ooh. Can we just let Bob rest in peace? Basically, all of Chad's instincts are wrong. Yeah, so then we start getting this idea. Well, if Chad's not going to go on MLC, he has the link. So let's start telling Chad. You know, we start coming up with an idea over in the NLO chat. Let's put it in Chad's head to give out the link to Kevin Brennan's show, MLC. Chad, you have the link. How StreamYard works is anybody with that link can join the show. Now, he's got a producer, so the producer has to, like, put you into the show from the backstage area, but we put that in Chad's head. You see him thinking about it and thinking about it, and then minutes later, up on the screen, he gives out the link. Then we go over to MLC, and Adam and... Uh, Kevin s starts seeing all these people flooding in. They just kick them all out. They don't let them onto the show. Again, the worst comedy instincts. It's like they were laughing when all the people came in. Let them in. Just what if you just let everybody on? What could happen? What do you think is going to happen? Um, everything on the NLO Discord is treating treated as public except the Kenovu level, but we don't talk about that. Yeah, what do you think about Sir Vosev? I think I've driven that guy off a cliff i feel really bad too i didn't know you know he'd be that sensitive I, you know it's screaming on air about him but on air is kind of like an amped up hyped up version but i guess he he had enough he's like i'm done with this project and then just like stopped responding in the server <laughs> so it's like we may need some new uh discord admins or people i don't know we might have we might have really run one off when I say we, I mean me. I assume it's all me. Uh, morning, everyone. Mountain, do you think KB will front Chad's list of demands for the AC trip? I mean, no way. No way. It's like it's like me coming out and just keep saying every show, um, 
You know, uh, if Comedy Central wants me to do a special with them, pff, sorry, it's going to be $200,000 minimum down up front. And then people go, does Comedy Central even make specials still? Are they offering you a special? Are you in talks with them about a special? And I was like, look, 200000 or we're not even going to discuss it. And everybody's like, I mean, yeah, we're not discussing it. Nobody invited you to do a special or asked you what your price is. It's 200000 I'm not going to say it again. And everybody's like, okay. So Chad keeps coming out every show and be like, $2,000 plus flight for me to go to Atlantic City. It's like, no one wants you in Atlantic City. First of all, there's no event. There's no event. There's no tickets. There's no plan. The plan is meet Kevin Brennan in the lobby near the poker room. Everyone knows where it is around 4 p.m. That's the plan for this event. Imagine the sad sacks willing to book a hotel and head there for that. As if you could even think that two months from now that will even take place. As if two months from now Kevin will even have a YouTube account or even be broadcasting or even talking to you people. You can't count on anything with this group. It's the most volatile situation ever. It's why, like, again, if I ever hold an event here, I want you to know you buy a ticket. We're having an event. I want to be the stable daddy you never had. Can I be the stable daddy? Uh, oh, fuck. Sir Vosef says I went to sleep. I'm glad. I really felt bad. I was like, oh, fuck. He took all that. Screaming on the stream is real and, like, fucked off. Because, look, I imagine it is a lot of work. It's complicated. I, I also know what it is to, like, be engulfed in a programming project and, like, it just keeps everything you fix, like, something else breaks or ten more things break. And you can't, like, get your head around it. And you almost need to, like, walk away from it for a while and come back with fresh eyes and, like, let your, you know, secondary back burner brain think about it. So I was being rough yesterday because we were streaming and I was just like, this piece of shit, we need to get this fucking work. I thought he, I thought he like, I really thought I like pissed him off and he went away. So I'm glad he's a nice man. <laughs> huh? uh, and honestly, Sir Vosef, um, it's a lot of work. I'm game, game of thronesing Sir Vosef out of this so that you can only rely on me as your helper. Oh, you're trying to get me to turn on him no no he's a talented dude and what he's built is great i just i w i do want to get it working and then at some point you know i'd like to if we start running that chart every day and doing a show we got to compensate him a little bit for that i've already offered him merch but you know he's doing a lot of work he set up almost everything over on the discord by the way, we have a channel over on the Discord that says contest entries only. That is for you to post your contest entries. You know, try to keep the crosstalk to a minimum. I see Kyle Anderson just posted a uh, an entry over there in the Discord. So email him in, Patrick at nobody likes .com. Post him in the Discord contest entry channel. Um, and we will be going over Dirty Dalish's birthday cards by the end of the show. They are rolling in. They can be, look, there's no guidance on these cards. Nasty, filthy, clean. It's Dirty Dalish. She's a dirty elf. She's got an OnlyFans. I bet she has fleas. <laughs> and you design whatever whisks your little mind into a frenzy. You, you make appeal to her because she's going to pick the winner. Fix the goddamn stream, Sir Vosef. Get out of chat and back to free work for our giggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if this is serious. As if any of this is serious. Um, All this is a lie. You should hear the stuff Patrick says in private about you, Sir Vosef. That's what I'm saying about the Discord, though. Like, imagine you taking a screenshot. It's a public Discord. It's open. Imagine you taking a screenshot of something I said and posting it to Chad. Like, look what he's saying about you, Chad. It's like, I assume he's in there. Chad, king of the alt accounts, I assume he's in our Discord. It's public. Find something I've said about Chad that I haven't said to his face. I dare you. And you can spin it any way you fucking want. They did want, like, a guy in the Discord asked, like, 
Hey, how much do you make off super chats versus like advertisements on channels? You know, like if you just leave a video up and you got no super chats on it, how much would you make in ads? And I was like, two cents, two cents, you know, nothing, two cents, who sent you sent for me? So I wrote that and somebody screenshotted it and sent it to Chad. Like, look, Melton say you, saying you only make two cents off your YouTube. It's like, what? Try harder, you know? And by the way, I'm the one who told all these NLOs to go cause chaos. Go use my name and go start shit with people. See if I give a fuck. I need to know who the broken people are. I need to know who the people are who believe everything their fucking chat room says and everything like a guy with a name says. I mean, every day we have a nobody likes onions in my own chat who hates, hates the fuck out of me just sending the weirdest shit. So I love that stuff. Melton looks so weak right now. No, look, I'm human, man. And I uh, was yelling at the guy and he doesn't even know me. I don't know how long he's been watching the show. I scream at everybody. So as long as he's fine, I don't even care if he wants to quit the discord and not help anymore. He's done a lot. Um, Moody thinks he's the hand of the king, but he's more like that weird doctor guy who does experiments on dead bodies. Oh, the maester. And he's got all the uh, clean, green, glowy shit. Fire, fire's bane, dragon's, dragon's breath. What's that stuff called? The green, the green, fiery liquid stuff. Everclear. I'm one of those guys, Patrick. See, I don't know what you're talking about. That's what happens when you're like. Here we go again, huh? Huh? Patrick going on and on and on ad nauseum about me. Me, Chad Zumok, Florida's most notorious comic. Hit that like button, subscribe, become a member. Jesus Christ, Patrick, will you get off my dick? Oh, happy birthday, Dalish. Wildfire. That's it, Moody. Thanks. I have nothing and no one, uh, not even you, Patrick. No offense. Uh, that's the way to live, man. Solo, baby. Yeah, we're not... Um Attacking Chad. Contrary to popular belief, we wish Chad the best. Go subscribe to Chad's channel. Watch Chad. I'm not telling anybody not to do that stuff. Support Chad. He's launching in a, a new store. By all means, head over there and um, support. Hey, uh, oh, somebody goes, did you know there's a basketball player named Melton. Yeah, somebody sent me some clips. I haven't put them in the board. Um Jason sent me some clips uh to play. I guess when I just dunk on people. Here comes Melton again. Here comes Melton again. Here comes Melton again. Cross court Melton aims from three. Sizing him up, kicks it out. Melton triple bullseye. I don't know. Are these good? Need some help. Melton provides it. Need some help. Melton provides it. A woman sportscaster. Is this even allowed? Need some help. Melton provides it. <sighs> Chills. Chills from that. I need a little better ones. I think probably. Uh Dave Hughes. Let's do some live support. Oh, man, I ordered a black on black flex fit hat the day you came on with the white on white, and I saw they were both in the store. I just realized as I got the NLO store payment. Hey, Dollish, happy birthday. I have your nudes, and I will release them to my Wi-Fi unless you give me $2,000. You don't want this released. It's embarrassing. It's boobies. I lost an arm wrestling match to a girl, and I am angry. Oh, God. Yeah, I did see that video of Chad losing an arm wrestling match to a girl. But that girl looked strong. And by the way, you know, you sh he should have hit on that chick. She was cute. He could have got it in. Been like, you're so strong. Take me. Uh, I just realized I got the NLO store payment confirmation for my debit card in, but nothing on the NLO store in. We had an issue with some emails not going out from our server. That should all be fixed by now. Just wanted to bring it up. Uh, I'm assuming the order was received fine, but after the cold sea incident, I don't know. 
Should I wait more than a month and mention it if I don't get the hat? Well, first of all, those hats just launched this week. So um, I doubt you would have received it yet if you ordered it this week. But also, and this is going to blow your mind, we, go to the website, log into your account, click on my account, and you're not going to believe this. It'll show you your subscription to the overdose, when it renews, how to get the, your RSS feed for the overdose, for bonus content, and you're not going to believe this. We thought of everything. Your store orders. Your store orders will be there. So you can, like, check on them yourself with tracking information, making sure it was received. But I'll look into it for you. That's what I'm here for. Happy, happy tech support. We're never going to insult another fan on this program again. If you say it, it's right. If you say it, it's right. We're not even going to question it anymore. If you email me and say, I ordered 19 hats, I didn't get them, we're going to get them out. We'll get them out immediately. We don't even check the system. You know? Come on. But I do understand that. Apparently, there was a, a problem with an SMTP thing and uh, emails weren't going out from our server. That's all been rectified. That's all been rectified. So if you're not getting emails now, and when I say now, I mean it from now. Let's just start it from now. Can you remote com into this complainer's computer? I. This would be a great bit. Would anybody be willing to do this? Jake Hudson, probably. What if we do, we remote into fans' computers from this program? And you just let me go through your computer. For $100, I just get to go through your system live on the air. Would anybody be willing to just let me do that? You don't get to prepare either or have some dummy system honeypot set up for me. Your main system, we, we send you a go to my PC link or one of those shitty, shitty things. And I just get to go through your whole computer, any folder I want, any file I want, photos, documents, emails. Um, we go through it live. You get a hundred bucks. Easy peasy. It's a good thing when a comic is best known for his dick, right? I've never heard anyone say that. Did you hear the funny joke Earl told? I think Earl's funny. I've only seen him on the roast battles. Um, but he does a voice on Adult Swim's The Jellies. I've made a conscious uh, effort to be kind to everyone on here since Patrick's sermon last week. We have noticed an attitude adjustment, James. I, I didn't set it up last night, but we are going to set that up. It is going to happen. It is going to be real. Where you go to nobodylikesonions.com slash Earl's headshot, and it will be Earl's naked picture. We're going to put a counter on the page. And then nobodylikesonions.com slash Patrick's balls for my balls. Patrick, you promised me free merch. Oh, yeah, send in an email. We'll get it right out. My bad. I must have forgotten. Do you outsource the shipping of merch, or do you do it all? Can you imagine? I don't touch your merch. I said I rub my dick on everything, but that's a lie. Um, I tried. They won't let me in the warehouse. Yeah, I've had merch, uh, four merch orders. I've gotten two of the orders, but never had any emails. Still, the merch got here in a timely fashion. Uh, there, I didn't know this. Uh, I think there was a problem with our DNS or something with the with the uh, SMTP with domain. Uh, you don't need to know. The point is, uh, I was getting emails and other people were having trouble receiving emails. Not everybody, not enough to where it was like an apparent big problem. But that should be fixed now. If you order something and don't get an email, let me know. Please let me know. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about our store. Head on over. Nobody likes onions.com slash store. Pick up your hat. We got the black hats, all black, black on black, white on white. Support the show. Head on over. Pick up something from the store. Okay? Uh, and get in your Dalish birthday cards. 
Um, I'll let you do it right now if you want. You can go through my entire X videos history. Careful on the stream. I have my X's nudes on there. Tax returns. Oh, yeah. Let's go through all of your shit. Mine is just full of AI images and chat GPT haikus for this show. Oh, no. Are you the, po are you the poet? That slam poetry from it, David Attenborough is great. I'll let you connect to my Nintendo Switch and check my game catalog for $50. Hey, Patrick, my hat was the wrong size. My shirt was supposed to be a flat bill. <laughs> ah! All right. All right. Let's work through it. Anyway, MLC's crazy now. Chat's talking about Carl. Like wanting to make up with Carl from WATP. Can you even imagine what Carl thinks about that? Tomorrow, Ray's going to be on Who Are These Podcasts, so I imagine that'll be an interesting episode. I know I'll be looking forward to clips from that. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just, it's, just uh, it's getting wild. It's getting twisty. Uh, but I do wish Kevin the best of luck. I wish Bob the best of luck, and I wish Chad the best of luck. I have no dogs in this fight. I really don't. As long as Casey Armstrong meets his end, that's all we really care about over here. Nobody likes onions, okay? That's what we're focused on now. Can we all unite as one big entity to just take down uh, Casey Armstrong? And I think we might have somebody on the inside helping us. This is Vince the lawyer. I don't know. He was on uh, Shuli's stream the other day, and I thought, wow, what a little worm in the corner. But then I see him really step out of his shell and appear on this Casey Armstrong show last night, and I paused it, and I said, save it for tomorrow. This is going to be a watch. This is going to take a full day, long-form watch. Are the Dalish birthday cards the art event today? Says Lady Slug, 100%. This is our art contest for today. Get in your entries. And there's only one over in the Discord right now, but they are trickling in via email. Say happy birthday to Dirty Dalish, won't you? Won't you whip up a birthday card for her? You could win something from the program today, but more importantly, you're going to make a young lady have some self-esteem. And that's probably what she needs right now. She has an OnlyFans. She's 24 years old. Something went wrong with a father. You know what I mean? Something went really bad. This girl needs the money. She definitely has cigarette burns on her tush. <laughs> Isn't that what we all just think? We think any woman that's involved in uh, any sort of sex industry stuff must be, must have been completely dicked down by her dad. That's just what we think. Sorry, that's in the back of our heads. Ever since Caden Cross, when she was interviewed on this show, and we weren't allowed to ask her about her father, I was like, oh, they're all broken. And I don't even know, you know, the, what the line is between like a porn star or a cam girl or a OnlyFans girl or a Instagram model or a thirst trap. Who even knows these days? What with all the tits and labia out there? Who can be sure? Who could even know? I don't know how Discord works, but I don't like that. Mute it. <laughs> okay, uh, Jim Stancil, who I don't know, but he can't stop shitting all over me on the internet. K. C. Armstrong? More like KC. Shoulder hurts. Ha, ha, ha. <sighs> Don't mind me just working out some new material. Hey, real quick, shout out to my Nick of Flimsy Greenberg, a real one out here on these streets. He stays strapped and ready to slide on the ops. No cap. Um, Melton on OnlyFans. I've never been on OnlyFans. I've never been on OnlyFans. Dalish is right. She's like, this is false advertising. People are going to go on my sub looking for burn marks on my ass now. <laughs> yep. Yep. My dad burnt me with cigarettes when I was little. Your dad didn't burn you with cigarettes. I doubt he even loved you. If your dad didn't come home late at night on Friday screaming with alcohol breath and burning you with cigarettes, I don't even know if you had a family. You know what I mean? 
eating ass live on a stream. Aaron is my favorite AI. Lowest of the low of operatives choose a life of being a scammer. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Uh, so Jim Stancil, who, you know, is a guy, apparently filmed this video, and it's gotten two video, two views. Um, so I don't know if that's indicative of how many people have seen it or not. But he's walking into compound media and we get this this uh image of compound media we've never really seen before this view of compound media um that we've never seen before i'm happy i'm happy to see it you see this dale is just crying herself to sleep because her dad never loved her get make her a birthday card will you it's Dalish's birthday. We're taking birthday cards. Um, if you need uh, if you need inspiration for what kind of birthday card to make her, just head over to Google and search Dirty Dalish. Or what's the other name you, you're under? Dalish Tokes. Dalish Tokes. T-O-K-E-S, because she pretends to be good at weed. Um, search for those and you're gonna. You're going to get an idea of what you should do. Stancil is Stevie Lou's lover. They stick fingers in each other constantly. It's gross. Okay. Let's go. Everyone should like what they like. Cucking out or not watching something. So this is New York City. Constant uh, city of scaffolding. It's never done. They're always working on building facades. Like if somebody's on it, it makes you a... Piazza, in my opinion. Chip on me. Thank you. So the building compound is in is pretty bare bones. He just walked through a door and got on an elevator almost, you know, there's not even a lobby or anything. This is just, you know, big difference from XM radio, of course. He gets in this elevator with a guy. They're just standing there. I saw that Cardiff said uh, KB got his channel struck, but they didn't tell you. Hold on. What a building. So the elevator is just completely broken in Kumia's building. Just not working at all. Welcome to the channel, Patrick Michael. We won't make funny over here like Carl does. You're safe here, buddy. Stancil tried to deep throw a dildo in on in hot water three weeks ago. That's the kind of stellar content this meathead's capable of. I wish I could tell you I hadn't done that on a show. I never tried to deep throw it. Daddy has a gag reflex. But um, we've all sucked a dildo on a program. You know, it's nine years ago, so these guys are catching up. How the fuck did we find out about this broad's birthday? Who cares? Well, look, she's clearly a stellar marketer. She goes in all these shows, chat rooms. Don't think I'm not aware of what's happening. She's getting clientele from these shows. She's not dumb. She recognizes that this particular corner of the internet, I think, is full of desperate incel boomer men, uh, most of which are autists or mild retardation is involved. And she's realized that she can make bank from it. I mean, I, I just, that's what I have to imagine is going on behind the scenes. I imagine we talk about her whiskey pussy here. We show pictures and talk about the elf ears. And then the show ends. And by the way, she does this on a million shows. Most of which, ironically, have eight people watching. And then she gets a lot of requests and DMs for customs 
and videos. She she gets it. Scotty Face says, damn, I'm in this demographic. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Ian Hawk says Patrick's describing me. Yeah, I mean, look, she's not dumb. Uh, and power to her. You know, use that coin purse, I say. Anytime you hear the words Jim Stansel, you can literally interpret it as the last cashier you dealt with or random person you saw on the street. He's white noise in human form. This is one of the most brutal things I've ever heard to describe a human. He's white noise in human form. Rough, rough, rough. It's not tidy, but it, but is a mess. What the fuck did we expect? Melton is still pretending to be bigger, uh, bigger stoner than I am. <laughs> OPS videos touring the inside of compound media. I can't imagine trying to be funny in that bright ass fluorescent green studio. Everyone seems to like Skakel and Stansel, but nobody can give me a reason. Um, the true reason breadline Brennan is doing Atlantic city thing is to, is aroused to meet William, his sugar daddy, in person for a liaison. Oh, they're going to do some docking and stuff? Uh, I'm now considering launching an OnlyFans account. Another one? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, Hold on. Okay, hear me out. Listen to Win by 2 Live, about 100 viewers. That's around 80 in cells all digesting the same content. Dalis just says hi to you in the chat once and you're hooked, so watch out, guys. No, I think she's uh I think she's a succubus. I think she I think she's good. I've watched her. I've watched her. In her I've watched her. She doesn't know it. I'm in the bushes. I w look. I see it. I'm just saying I see it. I watch things. I notice things. So, you know. You're going to sit here and, and try to make me think I don't see what I what I see. I see. I see. So we are skipping the show that made you relevant so you could cover somebody's home videos of New York. What are you, talk, what are you talking about? Citizen M's always just bad. Like, I have no clue what that even means. You know, the show that made me relevant again. Is this another like red bar? I don't know what he's talking about. All he, all this guy does every day is red bar, red bar, red bar. It's like, red, is, red, is Mike doing a show? Is he even around? What are you talking about? <laughs> I knew a girl that sucked off a whole bus. Okay. Okay. We're done here. We're done here. I've just never seen this side of Kumia's compound building. Oh, really? Here we go. We're still, oh, sorry, I'm live on this thing. We've been at the first floor now. All right, here we go. Maybe we try another thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's working. I don't think it's working. So the elevator in this building is busted. Is there two? We got technical technical difficulties, folks. Technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to miss super chats today. Every day I've left without reading like the last three super chats. I apologize about that. Got a little ahead of myself. High drama here, folks. So everybody just keeps getting in this elevator and it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's happening here, but uh, $4.99 super sticker. Four ninety nine. Oh, you're saying to just cover steel toe? Citizen M, you gotta go. You gotta go. It's over. It's over, honey. Like it's just oh, like we move on from things. Nothing gold can stay. We like you. You're a broken guy. Go hang out with Soft Weekly. He's obsessed with steel toe. And I don't even mean that in a bad way. That's he's a nice guy. We've never had a real bad interaction or anything, but like some people can't let go of steel toe. They're obsessed with steel toe. It's like steel toe is a grape on a bunch of grapes 
on my low cal bush. Do you know what I mean? Like we're moving on the same way. I, I didn't just, first of all, no one brought me anything. I found it all. Chad tweeted. I got in a thing with Chad and Chad blocked me. Aaron M. Holt was fighting with Chad at the same time. So I started paying attention to Aaron M. Holt. We realized what Aaron M. Holt was. We started tearing apart Aaron M. Holt. We start paying attention to the MLC Dabbleverse you know, universe because of Aaron M. Holt. We find all these whack packer guys because of that. And now we're on Casey Armstrong and Dalish and anything else we want to be on. The guys who want this show every morning to boot up and just talk steel toe. I got news for you, and Citizen M's not going to like it, but, and and again, I don't know if it's, when I say Citizen M, I don't, who knows what the real one is, but I think it's the real, I don't know, they're just, they're all broken, all the Citizen M's are broken, I think the M stands for mental, and um, I just hate to break it to you, but like, you like Steel Toe, you like Steel Toe, <laughs> you know. So, you are broken. Watch the arrogance. No, no, no. I won't. I won't. We're fine over here. If you if you think I had 50 viewers before Steel Toe, you're dumber than you look. You're dumber than you even look. So, we're not going to argue about it, but I'm just here to tell you that the reason you're salty is because you're gay. You know, it's like the senators who are Republicans who can't stop screaming about homosexuals and wanting laws banning homosexuality. And then two two months later, you find them toe tapping in a rest area, sucking off a trucker through a glory hole. That's you. You're angry because you're gay. You're mad that we don't make fun of Steel Toe because you want to watch Steel Toe. That's the truth. You want to you want to uh, watch Steel Toe because you like Steel Toe, but you want to do it through the glasses of ironic hate, so that you don't feel guilty about enjoying Steel Toe. It's like no 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 no. You like Steel Toe, you like Steel Toe. So don't get it twisted. All these feelings you're having when you're in a chat room on a morning where everyone's having a good time and you're just having like you know, internal struggles and it hurts and you keep hitting your brain and you're like, why doesn't he cover steel toe? Why doesn't he cover steel toe? Because we're all straight and trying to fuck and you're gay and you want to go toe tap in a rest area. And it's like, we're not shaming you. We're not kink shaming you. By all means, go toe tap in the rest area. Go do that. That's allowed. Matter of fact, there's a guy in the next stall waiting for you. His name is Aaron M. Holt. His name is Aaron M. Holt. He's in there waiting for you. Aaron who? Oh, yeah, the bitch. He's in there waiting. So head on in. Tap your toes. He'll go ahead and unzip. April will lift up his two and a half inch chode, shove it through the hole to you, and you shall be able to Pucker your little lips around it and just start. And as you feel the salty dribble of warm cum cascade down your gullet, you'll get that dopian, dopamine rush you've been craving all morning. It'll ding, 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 ding in your little brain. And you'll sit back in your chair and you'll go. <sighs> Love come. And that'll be you. And that'll be your morning. And then, by the way, do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Sooner or later, you won't even need us. You'll be able to overcome your fear of this addiction. Embrace it. And you'll be able to hang out in Steel Toe's chat room directly. He still does a show, honey. He still does a show. You're allowed to go over there and watch it. 
He's on every morning, sweetheart. He's on every day. Go over there and steal toe till your little heart's complete. We don't care. It's allowed. No one here cares that you like it. No one here cares that you want to watch Aaron all morning. I don't know. Maybe there's a little side crush on Aaron. Part of you thinks you might be straight. But, you, you know, it's allowed. And, we're, and we encourage it. Go like Aaron. It's okay. Steel Toe's a great show for mealy-minded simps. Go watch it. We'll wait. We'll be here when it's over. Covering something else, of course, because we don't have attention spans that border on obsessive. So we're going to move on to something else. But I do appreciate the input. I do appreciate you in here every day. Ooh, cover Aaron. Hey. I've got 900 hours on Aaron. Go watch it on a loop. It's allowed. It's allowed. And go enjoy the real Aaron. I think, like, honestly, he needs a friend right now. Message him. It'll feel great. It'll feel really, really good. But imagine just removing that mask and admitting to yourself, you like the toe tap. You like the feeling of another man's scrot in your throat. And just get it over with, okay? Okay. Are we good? Uh, KC Armstrong says, can you send me the other half of your beard in a Ziploc? One ninety nine from Rails, I care. Steel Toe sucks. I don't know if that's true. Uh, not me, remove the fake citizen miss. <laughs> and a four ninety nine super sticker from KC Armstrong. Look, again, it could be you, it could not be you, but this goes out to everybody. Just with that sen sentimentality. It's okay. It's okay. Shh. Shh. It's okay to like Steel Toe. It really is. It doesn't affect anyone else's week here. We know. We know, honey. We know. Just go watch it. We're going to watch this, and then we're going to watch Casey Armstrong. Okay? Back to Compound Media, where the elevators never work. LT. Yeah, tell E Rock to cancel my sub. Not his sub. God, God forbid he misses a meal. <laughs> Teamster Tim, classic. <laughs> Teamster Tim, everybody's still talking about his appearance on MLC. It's a great foil. Teamster Tim, Ski Mask still owes me money, by the way. You gotta get his ear. Ski mask owes this guy money. Okay, okay. here we go. Here we go. Agree. Floor nine. <laughs> the hell, you can't even tell what floor you're on on this elevator. Okay, compound media. I had never seen this um, outside of compound media. It looks like you're going to someone's apartment. In New York. Hold on. Crumbum says, remember when the power went out at Compound because KB slammed the door? Is that what? Kevin Brennan slammed the door one time and the power went out to the whole studio? I mean, that's wild. That's wild. How long ago was that? I imagine the whole thing then is like plugged into some extension cord. They have one outlet in the apartment. This looks like a residential apartment building. It's wild. They have a plug and then they like plug it in and the whole studio's just in a uh on an extension cord or something. Hello. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh, it's Stevie Lou. Dude, it was one of the most insane things ever. Kevin Brennan had like one of these epic fucking fits of anger. And he like, I like, mean, Stevie, you you've had fits of anger in that studio. He is my idol. <laughs> so you're onto something here. So anyway, he goes to leave the studio in a fit of rage and slams the door. And somehow he knocked the main electrical wire 
like in the wall loose and the entire studio went completely dark and the stream cut off immediately. We had no idea what was going on. It was like straight out of the last episode of the Sopranos. Do they lose uh, all the recordings and everything? So they do have like a, a, it backs up immediately. They have like, I don't know, I'm not as technical savvy as you, but they do have like a fail safe backup that was going until the very last second. And then they immediately, Anthony went on uh, Instagram live with like a flashlight and they were like, it was insane, bro. You got to check out the footage. It's definitely out there. I just wanted to chime in and say, uh, I hope you have a nice weekend. You too. Godspeed. Um, Stevie Lou, everybody. Again, every time he calls in, reasonable, reasonable guy. You know who I also, I think I'm going to let out of the penalty box today? I'm in such a good mood today. I really am. So today, I think out of the penalty box, uh, I'm going to let allow, somehow last night on his stream, he won me over. I'm going to allow Ray DeVito out of my penalty box. For the for the look, I don't want to be friends with him. I don't want to talk to him, but I'm gonna let the the grudge go. He has been apologizing profusely, which he refused to do after the incident. After the incident, he he was just doubling down on his ignorance and stupidity. So he has been, as of late at least, saying, "I'm sorry to Melton. I'm sorry to Melton. It's okay. It's forgiven. Everyone knows you're full of shit. So it's not." It's not like, you know, when Ray says Melton's a liar, everybody thinks Ray knows what he's talking about. So no real damage done to my brand. It just was a shitty thing to see happening from a friend's perspective. But I think, I know Ray Ray doesn't have a malicious bonus, but I'm sure Carlos Danger is going to love to hear this. <laughs> um, but I don't think Ray's a bad guy or out to hurt anything. But um, but I can't be a part of, like, anything he does either because he does just continue to spout off about shit he doesn't really know about. And at the end of the day, that is harmful. So unless he makes some sort of effort to, like, really get... I, I, uh, Carlos Danger last night was talking to him. I think it might be his meds. I think really, like, his meds might just be off. Um, so I don't know. I think his meds might just be misaligned. He can't focus. It seems very adult ADHD. Ray is playing Patrick and he's a bad guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, but I'm going to let him out of my penalty box. I don't, I never really had anything, you know, we're not trying to bring Ray down or anything, but I do stick by my original contention that I, there's never been a guy that needed a podcast less. And yet three times a day he's live. So I don't get it. Um, I don't get it at all. And, uh, and uh, yeah, as for Chad being like, I mean, Chad, Chad tries to manipulate people with lies. When, when, I don't know how to explain it, but when Ray was, when Ray was screaming, Melton's got a fake video, Mel I know that video is fake. I know Melton's got a fake video. It's like when Ray says, I know something, he doesn't know shit. And he, he doesn't even mean he knows it. He just is, it's hard. To, he's just talking. Ray's just talking, you know, like it's noise. I wish it was human white noise. I wish it was, but it's not. And, um, but when Chad says things, it's with a purpose behind it. It's to manipulate. It's to gain sympathy. It's to make people, you know, there's always a reason behind what, when Chad lies about somebody. So it isn't the same thing to me, really. More people enabling stupid, no accountability. 50-year-old Ray, Ray, great work, Patrick. Ray is disabled, and so is KC. They both have legitimate mental impairments. Is it okay to make fun of them? There's a gray area. I mean, you can make fun of anybody. I don't. I'll make fun of kids and retarded people and dogs with two legs. I don't give a shit. 
you can make fun of anything. I just like the core of a person, their intentions matter. Actions matter, but the intentions behind them matter more to me. And so like, you know, it's like if you loan your car to someone and they get, they wreck your car, like it sucks, but were they drinking and driving or did they just go around a corner and somebody hit, you know what I mean? Like if someone wrecks your car, they intentionally were doing something irresponsible, malicious, neglectful. It's one thing. And that's a different crime, by the way, than just getting in a car accident or something happening to your car that wasn't their fault. You know, somebody broke into your car while it was parked at their house. Is that their fault? No. But they left the windows down and the keys in the ignition. Now, are they going to take some heat? Yeah, probably. So it's not six and one half dozen the other. Intention matters. Context matters. And the context generally surrounding all of Ray's faults and wrongs are just about him being incapable or just about him being uninformed and too dumb to know what he's saying half the time. And unfortunately, he just keeps insisting on talking more and more. So the wrong speak will just constantly be multiplied and multiplied. You're trying to edge me with this Ray bullshit? Get to KC in the 75. All right, we're going to watch the compound media stuff first, and then somebody just emailed the KB slamming the door and power going out video. We're going to watch that too, and then we'll get to all the KC stuff, okay? And don't forget, send in your Dirty Dalish birthday cards. That's the art, art project today. Send okay, those in. Here. I don't know what I saw it change colors like the Kamaya And Are you telling me Blaine and Hawkins were killed by a fucking lizard? What the fuck? Earl, don't ever do that again. <laughs> so that's the door at the end of the hallway. It's literally like this looks like an apartment door in NYC. It's wild. It's just a door in a hallway with a million other doors with a compound media sticker on it. Very unassuming. <laughs> It's not locked. You can walk right in. And this is the best looking part of the compound media studio. Is this sofa and waiting area right when you open the door. This is the only part that looks composed and thoughtful in the whole place. Bobby, you're live on YouTube. Do you have anything to say? This is like a dusty desk covered in garbage. And by garbage, I mean this guy. And you said COVID isn't real. The vaccine's fake. It's too late. I'm 19 minutes in. That's only the first 10 minutes. You can't talk about that. Bobby tried to ruin me. Ruin my YouTube channel that makes me 70 cents a day. Up to and over 70 cents a day. So imagine trying to do a show in this room. You know, I've said this a lot before, but imagine trying to do a show in this room where it's bright fluorescent lighting, garish, bright Kelly green walls. And you just have to sit here and try to be funny and laugh and pretend like the walls aren't this bright and green. Cables everywhere. The the cable management, the tripod management. Imagine using these giant footprinted three-leg tripods everywhere. It's just like... It was definitely, this studio was definitely put together by somebody who knows enough to do it wrong, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like, it, it looks like a garbage pile. There you have it. <laughs> Iraq is not here, Timmy. I'm sorry. And there's like a picnic table set up. This is similar to what I'm going to have outside tomorrow for barbecuing. You know, it's just a table set up with empty alcohol bottles, a folding table, paper towels, bunch of junk wrappers and shit around. There it is, Dubra, folks. Where it all begins. Empty bottles of, of vodka. Bins again. Napkins everywhere. Bags, trash, takeout wrappers, Big Mac containers. I mean, literal dolls, toys. Garbage on the floor. All right. Steve's obviously taking a shit. They do this thing too, like where they show 
E-Rock in the booth during a show. They have a camera outside the booth aiming into the booth at E-Rock. So you see the glare of the glass. Like, it's just like there's no one there paying attention. Everyone set this up 13 years ago and then walked away. And then walked away. Dirty Dalish makes a good point, and I saw this last night, too. You know, she was on Ray's stream, which we should cover at some point. It's very funny. Uh, two nights ago, Wednesday night. And then yesterday, people were talking about Dirty Dalish Day here on NLO, Dalish's birthday. And he didn't really, you could tell he didn't know who we were talking about. And he just moves on. Ray does it all the time. Like somebody will bring up some gold or some great stuff to talk about. And Ray will just dismiss it and move on because he didn't catch it. And it leaves Carlos Danger sitting there or whoever's sitting there talking to him just, just goes, okay, I guess we're moving on. He's very easily distracted by the chat and stuff. Josie Master says, yuck, can you imagine the smell in here at Compound Media? Oh, God. Like someone who knows how to operate a gun but knows nothing about gun safety, enough knowledge to do it all wrong. Yeah, this is Freddie Dunning-Kruger syndrome. <coughs> Bobby, I'm sure will. Just a closet over here piled with garbage. Make fun of me as he always does. Down here, piled up full of garbage. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right. 20 so you know what I mean? That, that waiting room is the nicest area of that studio. That waiting area is like the, the best area you could be in in that whole studio. $75. <laughs> Kevin Brennan slams the door at Compound Media. Okay, this is the one. Let's see the power go out. How flimsily wired this fucking place is. Um, all right, here we go. <laughs> you, know, you do understand there's no a, way that I get the way part. Kevin yeah. giving out Calta's number should have had any bearing on you getting and I, No, and I, I'm going to say it again. I didn't care about that. But you said no. Yeah. He gave out. Why are they playing? Uh, Don't stop believing. Honey, you said it, honey. This is gonna get me all democratized. He gave out Calta's number. I didn't care. And then why would they? Why would they put this music over it? Whoever edited this three-minute clip was like, I know what this needs. Don't stop believing underneath it. Is there is there any way there's another version of this that doesn't have an insane, an insanely useless copyrighted track? Is he sick? Um. All right. Here's another clip. God damn. It's like, what about again? Some people have the worst instincts. It's like I know what I'll do. <laughs> or something. Hey, here he is. Here, I'm leaving so you can do the I'm show. Not do That's the name of today's show. I'm not doing a show of Geno's sure here. It is. All right, I'm leaving, buddy. I'm wow. Sleeping. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking coward. Holy shit, you want to dance? Whoa, what are you doing? Get the fuck out of here. I've your seen this. Here, no, just say. Bitch. Is this the one where the power goes out? I've seen this, but I didn't see any power go out. Oh, Sopranos ended with a song that went to black. Yeah, very creative, super helpful. Look, I said you I said to break your other fucking jaw, you fucking bitch. They're not gonna you only got this. one. There's two sides to it, but it's considered one single jaw. <laughs> Kumia, Kumia is funny. You know, one of the funniest alleged pedos around. So you're gonna right. throw away your life to take a swing at me? Throw away my life. What? Throw away Listen your life. to me. Listen to me. Right, Chad? Why do you take a swing at someone Get on the TV? Fuck when out you have here. A wife you're and a kid? fucking.
You're a faggot. Oh, God. Now, I've seen a few of those out on the sidewalk. No, no, no. no, no, she, no, no. I'm going. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Do you think? Work? Oh, you shit. Think? You're a man. It's like Kevin Brennan chasing you around a studio. It's like Kevin tough. How tall is Kevin? Why is everyone in this world, like, obsessed with physical fights? And, like, nobody's good at it, by the way, you know? I guess Pat Dixon got a good one in. That's why Anthony needed Opie. Opie's a tool, but he knew how to manage and expand their brand. Anthony's a 65-year-old teenager. This place. Take a seat, Kevin Brennan. You know I, I, I love having you here. I'm always a Thursday. <laughs> you are. You are. You're going to sit in the same seat that piece of shit Gino is sitting in? You want to switch? I'm just stirring stuff up. I don't know. Huh? Look at Gino. No, Gino, it's oh, cool. God. Stop like a fucking cat. It's cool. We'll go out. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, my God. Get out of here. Get over here. Beavis. Get the fuck out of here. No one's hitting anyone you're better than. Get the fuck out of here. No one's hitting anyone you're better than, no you're hitting not, you're you're better than that. Human fucking garbage. No, okay, that's fine. But you don't you hit have, human Do you have them on payroll, to, uh, on just a, a payroll reduction? What does that mean? Aaron Berg, yeah. payroll cut. Pat Dixon, payroll oh, wow. cut. Yeah, yeah. You hire a toxic douche like How this. Am I toxic? And everybody quits or gets fired. Hey, hey, I didn't give him a raise. You quit. <laughs> you quit. Don't bitch. think I took that money and gave it to anybody but myself. That's what I'm saying. It's genius. <laughs> it's genius. Instead of going, we're going to have to make some cuts, you hire a douche. Yeah. <laughs> get him extra drunk for a couple of months. Everybody quits, and then you guys are off the hook. You can't fire Aaron Burke. He has to quit on his he's own. He's got me. <laughs> my goodness, he's figured out my scam. He has to quit on his own merits. If you fire Aaron Burke, it looks bad for you, right? If you fire Pat Dixon, it looks bad for you. I wasn't going to. No, no. No, but I'm saying I like did fire Gino, Pat Dixon. Yeah. I know, but you kind of had to. I had to. So, But I'm saying because of him. But I wouldn't have fired. I didn't want to fire Aaron. I know, because he quit because Gino's a douchebag. So you guys, in your genius, either E-Rock or you, well, or Bobo, all right, realize. All right, know that E-Rock can't. <laughs> no, you, what you realize is, like, we can't get rid of Aaron Berg. So what we'll do is we'll get this douchebag so pissed off that he's like, I can't be around him anymore. Oh, Alex Jones with your conspiracy, you're going to owe a billion dollars. I don't mind. I don't have that much. I have less than Alex <laughs> Neither Jones. Neither does Alex Jones. I have less than Alex Jones. Wow. Okay, so... I need. It's almost like we said before. We were talking about this before. Right. right. What's that? I really like what baffles me, and I haven't seen the power go out yet. But this is multiple rooms. It has to be multiple, you know, um, circuit breaker. You know, I imagine this isn't all running out of one outlet. Like I said, on a on a power strip. If you could shut, if you could slam a door and make all of this go out, I, like that's wild. Yeah. Don't get mad at him for being right. I'm so then you're like, oh, oh, I checked the numbers oh, he and he text, was rounding so I'll give it up. Out 20 but my times. point is, He's you don't get to act Davis. like I'm the idiot. I'm no. like, well then, Can't then wait. let's give out your number if Davis. you're shitting on see, my show. See, you gave you s hold on out the number I, without a doubt. But so you see how. The booth cam is like through a window, so it's all foggy and has a glare. It's like, put a camera in the booth. Just put a camera in the booth. You you have you're incapable of actually going. Perhaps that wasn't the right. Yeah. I apologize to you last to night repeatedly. Yes, because and, because and, you don't want me putting and a situation I believe, where I have to deal with. Blood I death. believe if you're one of the how many Kevin seven people that watch in hot water, I showed a text thread where I apologized to him four times in the thread. Did he apologize to you personally? No. All right. Would you like to my see number? the thread? No. Huh? Garrett, okay. do you have the so thread? Instead of just saying I'm sorry, he's going, I did it four times. You want to see the thread? It's like, just say you're sorry. What's going on? <laughs> Would you Daniel like C says, I'm surprised Gino doesn't get his ass beat almost every single gay day. He's one of the most annoying people ever. He never, ever, ever stops talking. These old buildings in NYC are all cobbled together and shit. I worked on one. For a few years, you know, Union Square always falling apart. Yeah, but like, you know, these parcels, like the rooms themselves, like usually when you build this studio out, you you hire a contractor to do all the power inside your unit and then connect it up to like the building's main power. So the fault has to lie in whatever contracting work was done in this studio space. I, I You know, I imagine they bought the unit and then built out the studio and the walls and the waiting room and the, the booth and the 
So they built it. They wired all this. He contracted to have this done. Stevie Lou says it's the wiring in the building. He slammed the door so hard it knocked off one of the connections to the main electrical feed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was tapped in shoddily or something, you know. Dirty Dalish says KB has to be the same height as her. How tall is uh, uh, KB? Does anybody know? I missed it before. Oh, oh, no, wait, no, now you, no, now, you, now you're telling Garrett what to do, but you can't tell him the I like how they're both leaning and pulling the mics. Look at them. I got my number, you fucking faggot. I didn't think that, I, I didn't that's... think it was a problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, 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 he's running into the thing. Look at Kevin. No, no fighting. Shut the door. Close all airtight doors. Close the air. No, 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 no. Close all airtight doors. No, no, no. Why? Oh, my God. I just made it in time. Holy shit. What is oh he doing? my God! This is insane. Show, do, do you not want us to show the thread uh, where I apologize to you for How about that? Fuck this! Fuck this! No, no, no! Come on, Kevin. I, uh, Bye. Oh. Bye. Everyone's such a fucking baby on this on this world. You know, like Chad can't be on a show with Ray. Kevin can't be on a show with Gino. Gino does get Kevin fucking wild that's what happened on wednesday you know like gino quit his or sorry kevin quit his own show he just like stormed off because of gino gino makes kevin go crazy um he's five six three okay so kevin's tall Gino's got all the answers. No, 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 he always no. got Oh, Kevin. Kevin. Oh, Kevin. No, no, no. It's so, Oh, my God. He's like a black woman in a Wawa. No, Ke Kevin. Jesus. That's fucking fucked. No, no. You don't need to. Oh, no. Oh, don't hit him. Don't punch him. Don't punch no, no, Gino. No, 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 no. Don't punch him. I can't have assaults happen on this. On this. Uh, Oh my You're god, the security ca the You're security cameras are up. Oh I'm so glad Erox here to take care of this. Oh my god, wait a minute. He's coming through the door. I don't have a problem with me breaking this, do you? No, no. That's Gino's fucking vlog. Breaking what? I don't breaking the camera. No, no, no you can't break the camera. No, but I don't have a problem with it. Do you? No, I would have a problem with it. Hey, that Gino's logic. He doesn't like... have a problem giving out my number, so I shouldn't. Yeah. Well, why does Kevin lose his mind when people give out his number? Again, I just assume anybody can get my info. It's like, so this is the second time, you know, this week and this video we're watching here. It's like Kevin melts down if someone gives out his phone number. Beloved Chatters, loved one just posted a birthday card to Dirty, Dirty Dalish in the Discord. That's great. Well, but we already You're looking forward to yours. Patrick and nobody likes onions.com or on our discord, your art project assignment for the day, dirty Dalish, uh, birthday cards. Get them in. What he been through? No, no numbers. Will no, be he's still, out. I still get a fucking door because he's a faggot. Yeah. Look at him. He's a fucking dick. Everybody calls. Oh, I don't have a problem because you don't have a problem. I'll fucking kill you, you fucking faggot. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Kevin is unhinged, man. I think the real lesson we've learned this week and probably the main reason we're actually celebrating Dirty, Dirty Dalish's birthday is we're celebrating women this week. We're celebrating women's ability to maintain their composure, uh, so to speak. Going to keep my composure, right? I mean, this is this is rough stuff. He's knocking over mics and stuff, you know. It's borderline. Hacker, hacker. <laughs> so this week again, uh, saw Kevin incensed about Gino Shocker giving out his number. Now there's only ten seconds left in this video. Are we gonna see a door slam? Um, and the power go out? I hope so. Oh, oh, no, no. Come on, that, oh. Come on. All right. It's, Shoot. Keep that. There, there he goes. Fucking You're a fucking... Wow. Wow.
You know, if anything sums up my chat room, this whole, this little, you know, tableau really shows why I just get furious at this chat. And by the way, I don't want the video now. I don't even want it. That's what everyone deserves, blue balls. That's what everyone deserves, blue balls. Hey, you got to see the video where Kevin slammed the door so hard the power goes out. Cool, send it. I mean, it's not this one, but watch this one. This is what we deserve. This is nobody likes onions. We swing for the fences. We land in a fucking bog. <laughs> you don't get it. We don't get to see it. We don't deserve it, frankly. As a team today, we didn't show up. All that, and I didn't even come. Yeah, exactly. Doc's the sender. I spent my time working on a card. I knew this would suck a big fat dick. Yeah, I mean, literally he was shutting the door, and that's when the video cuts. He didn't even slam it. Did a man send it? Blues Mama, you are correct. This is all men's fault. This is all men's fault. And uh, frankly, I don't know how we come back from this. Baby, if you've ever wanted... Better loving than me. I'm in the living room listening to Get BBC. The KCUK is me. Got tired of packing them, pounding by you. Asked them out and all that pig and play. Maybe you and me and him were meant to be. Just maybe think of me once in the pile. The KCUK is me. <laughs> the KCUK, it's cuck time, baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to believe what happened yesterday with KC Armstrong. Okay? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, God. So the night before, you know, Wednesday night, Casey was going to do a show with The Coach. And as we're noticing, we've only watched two KC shows, but it seems to be a running theme that A, no one wants to come on his show, and B, even if they did, he couldn't figure out how to get them on. So Thursday night, he I see he's posted that he's going live with a show called Casey and the Lawyer. And Vince the Lawyer. Now, I don't know who Vince the Lawyer is. Once I saw him, I recognized him from a stream the previous day with Shuley and company. So I imagine he's in that world somehow. After watching an hour of this guy, I have a lot of doubts that he is a lawyer or ever was a lawyer. Maybe, maybe not. What he, what he definitely is, 100%, is a troll. And Casey is so dumb that he doesn't realize he has agreed to do a program with a guy who is doing nothing but trolling him. Doing nothing but trolling him. I mean, it's not even subtle, but Casey is so thick and stupid. He's like Ray. He's so self-involved in his own thoughts and head. He's not really listening to what other people are saying or asking him. That's evident from the pink blanket ordeal. You know, people are like, We're, we want to know about the pink blanket. He's like, I'm not talking about who paid for the hotel. And it's like, Ray, we're not asking about that. We're asking about the pink blanket. Yeah, well, I told you I didn't want to talk about the hotel and who paid for the hotel. And it's like, Ray, we're not. He's not listening. 
So he's just getting madder and madder at some argument he's having in his own head that the rest of us aren't privy to, and we don't understand why he's melting down. So that is KC. He's literally an hour and 49 minute show, and who knows how much we'll get through today. I, I, I can't imagine. I watched maybe 20 minutes of it. This guy is broken for a guy who wants to pretend like he's done something in life. Let me tell you something, motherfucker. Car salesmen should be more proud of their careers than Casey Armstrong, formerly of the Stern Show. Everyone has written in to let me know you weren't a whack packer. You were a producer. People can say whatever they want. I've had a lot of Stern experts yell at me in emails overnight telling me he 100% was a producer, a real producer, whose job it was to plan events, plan segments, and execute those segments on air, to be an integral part of executing produced segments on air. Not Beetlejuice, not where we wheel him in on some sort of little parade float and make him do a little midget dance. That's not what he was. So this guy wants to pretend like he had a career in radio, like he's knowledgeable about broadcasting. That's the standard we're going to hold him to when he wags his finger at everybody with his stupid lisp. Ladies and gentlemen, last night's Casey Armstrong hour. This is fucking unreal. You're going to love the way you look. <laughs> he always comes on for a minute before he goes live. He always has to come on. Then, in, and I thank you all for joining us. I got a great show tonight. You don't. Very, very, very excited for my guest tonight. But you want to let your face know? This is very excited. This is very, very, very excited for my guest today. Before I do that, I do have to say something to the audience very quick. Oh, boy. And by the way, last night we get 150 people in his chat. It's all onions. This guy... Just so you know, he's used to doing a show for eight people. I'm not kidding. He's used to doing a program for eight live viewers. He had 150 people in his chat last night asking about the onions, half cuck, all this stuff. He was he was frazzled. And this guy, Vince, couldn't stop trolling him. It's so good. We'd love to talk to Vince. Reach out to Vince. And I won't keep my guests waiting. I am embarrassed and I'd like to apologize. Oh, to no. Guys. Apparently, I reacted to uh, someone who wasn't very kind. Um, you know, I guess I got mad because, like they were saying, um, it, and we're talking about someone who doesn't have more than like 5,000, you know, um, <laughs> views on any of the things. Vince, Vince, hu sorry, Vince, KC, honey, honey, eight people watch your show. Eight, eight. No matter what anyone wants to try to convince you about the Nobody Likes Onions program, the audience reach for this show, and I'm not kidding you has never dipped below 10,000, ever, ever, ever. Now, on YouTube, you can go all you want about like, oh, when, when you started the Steel Toe stuff, you were getting 50 to 70 live viewers a show. Yep, yep, on YouTube. My audio download numbers for this show, since it hit it, way back in 2007, have never dipped below 10,000 downloads a show. Ever. Ever. So, like, okay. 
But more importantly, it's like you couldn't sell a hundred anything if you tried. No one's watching your show. KC, you have 2.4 thousand subscribers. Eight people watch the show live. You're a stumbling, mumbling fool. <laughs> you know. This isn't the angle of attack for you where you go like, nobody even watches this guy. It's like, that's not the, that's not the vector of attack. <laughs> now, I'm not pretending that's a big show in the context of big shows. And certainly on YouTube, we're not like giant. I understand that. I get it. But like this this angle where you're like, and he doesn't even get more than, you know, 5,000 views on everything. It's like, do you want to go through your catalog of videos and find one with 5,000 views? I'll wait. I don't know. I'm sure maybe he has one. But most of the shows, again, the one he put up the other day had eight viewers. And when you pulled it down, it had 92 views. It's like Corey Adam attacking somebody for views. It's like, hello, I know Mr. Four Patreons isn't coming after me. You know, if I had four people in the overdose, I'd slice my wrists. So let's get it. He does this thing, too, where he's like, you know, he's trying to be contrite. He's trying to, like, you know, apologize to me and his audience for overreacting, but he still has to get his digs in because he's so insecure. He's like, yeah, I'm garbage. I'm a piece of shit. I'm happy with that. This is the, this is, I'm fine with my stature. I'm going to barbecue some pulled pork tomorrow. I don't care if four people watch or 400. Who gives a shit? You think the pork's going to taste worse? Where... We're a new channel and we're growing and some that we did like a week or two ago already have double that and we're learning. So oh, he's saying this guy never gets more than 5,000 on anything. We're a new channel and sometimes our shows from two weeks ago get double that. It's like, I gotta, I gotta go look now because now I'm confused. Ah! So now I got to go look just to see what he's talking about. 1.3 thousand a month ago, 1.5 thousand a month ago, 880 two months ago, 4K two months ago, 2.8K two months ago, five two months ago, one two months ago. Oh, okay, here's what he said. Oh, 10K 15 years ago, some stand up, and I kind of want to see his stand up. Here, let's go to live. 6.4K views, the Stuttering John show. 500 views, the uh, Howard Stern show, 1.8, 1 1.8, 1 1.2, 1 1.2, 457. Casey talks about trolls, 500 views. Three weeks ago, we might have to watch that. Here's an episode with Shuli, 1.4 thousand. I want to watch that. So he said, I only get 5,000 on everything, which isn't really even true. <laughs> um, and then he says, 1.1, he says he has shows with 10,000 views, but he doesn't. He just doesn't. That's a lie. Uh, you know, like, it just is. This is his show from last night. More viewers than he's ever had and only has 984. This show right here that you're watching has been on the air for two hours. It's already over 984. Like, what are you? As we go. And, you know, it's the people that are upset with their own career and what they haven't done. It's easy to pick on other people. So I want to say to you guys that I'm sorry for reacting. I should have remember everything about this guy's career. He attaches to Howard Stern. It's like when steel toe wants to like stand on red bar's shoulders, you know, like somebody starts fucking with steel toe and he's like, yeah, well, remember when red bar did that to you? Come on, red bar, get him. It's like red bar ain't with you. 
and Howard ain't with you, Casey. You don't get to pretend you had a career because you used to hang out with a guy who had a career. You know, I've issued this challenge several times. Get Howard on the phone. Call your buddy Howard on the phone. I'd love to see you and Howard just yuck it up. You ain't got his number. He ain't answering your call. You don't know Howard. You didn't have a career. <laughs> Never, ever even acknowledged that someone was saying, you know, things that were not true or whatever. I mean, it's like in my world, it just doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's like. I mean, honey, you had a full on meltdown two days in a row. And the one you're about to have tonight is really insane. The one you're about to have tonight on this program is nuts. Where you almost come to the realization live on the show that you're gay. <laughs> I hope I'm not blowing the load too early. That's what's about to happen. Somehow this guy deals with the haters calling him gay by regurgitating this repressed memory he has of hooking up with a dude in Alaska and coming to the conclusion that he may very well be gay. All driven, all steered by the masterful steady hand on the rudder of Vince the lawyer. Guiding this man to his gay conclusion. Onions, please stop calling dudes honey. Nope. You know, imagine even typing that to another man. Hey, could you stop using this word? No. No. When I talk about sweet men, I call them honey because they're sweet. Some like a uh, 10 year old going up to Michael Jordan. No, that's not a good example because that. Wow. So he got in his own head there for a second. You heard him say, I'm the, t you know, in his mind, I'm a 10 year old and he's Jordan. Again, these guys like imprint themselves onto their boss. In his mind, he's equal with Stern because he was on Stern. Really? Like, he really thinks that. He's like, I played in the big leagues. I was a pro. It's like, you weren't. You used to get the pro's coffee. <laughs> you know what I mean? You used to grab the pro. A spare. You used to get the, the, the guys who came on the Stern show. You would go get them a drink. Lead them into the studio, get them a water, get them a microphone. That was your job. You weren't stern. You were the low cow that stern milked. You weren't the farmer who rounded up the low cows. You were one of the low cows. So you don't get to, to you know... Again, you don't get to stand on the shoulder of a giant and call yourself tall. You don't get to do that. You have no no talent, nothing to offer. It was only your association with Stern. It's not even like Opie and Anthony where it's like, Opie brought something to the table, Anthony brought something to the table. If, if they didn't meet, neither one of them would have been shit. That's just facts. It's not even like that. It's like, if... Casey Armstrong hadn't have met Stern and gotten on the Stern show, Casey Armstrong would be a fired car salesman by now. He'd be a fucking junk bond guy. He's a garbage piece of shit. <laughs> but in his mind, he's like, I'm Jordan. And it's like, no, you were the towel boy for the Bulls farm team. You weren't even Jordan adjacent. Okay, so you setting up mics and getting people drinks as they come on as guests on the Stern Show, you're, you're not even serving Stern, you're serving guests. It's like if he fucked your wife in front of you and then had you go get her a towel, <laughs> you know. It's literally cucking you. You're a cuck, you're a half cuck, KC half cuck. It's why you're called that. That would be like I'd be Michael Jordan. But in this case, compared to me and this and this guy, yeah, yeah, I would be Michael Jordan. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Talking about like someone who's dribbled a basketball 
uh, maybe made a free throw compared to someone who's like, yeah, maybe one day I'm going to make a free throw. Maybe I'll play basketball. So that's all I'm going to say. And I apologize. And the guy, these guys, too, like Kevin Brennan, he's like, you've never even been on TV doing stand-up. It's like, that's not a thing anymore, Kevin. <laughs> no one's on TV doing stand-up anymore. No one. Oh, the clean guy they get on Kimmel every other week or something? Fallon, you know? I mean, who even? Name a comic that's on Fallon, you know, like... No, everyone's on YouTube. Everyone's on streaming services. So you screaming about Star Search and Comedy Central, it's irrelevant now. That's what Casey sounds like. This guy's never going to do anything. It's like, on terrestrial radio, that's your barometer of success? It's like, we're not doing that anymore. That's not a thing that exists. <laughs> As to you, the audience... For me, um, reacting. That's not what I do. I'm a nice guy. That's not my deal. I don't like bullies. Actually, I hate bullies. Whoa! I hate when people try and put other people down to make themselves feel better. To, I don't like the look of it. Know, to compensate for some lack of something or whatever. And, you know, I'm the guy that's like, uh, all right, does this guy need to be made an you know, example? Pe people always say this kind of stuff to... People who say this phrase, you know, I'm a guy, you know, I'm the kind of guy who, you know, I'm a guy who pretty much when you, it's like, stop telling me what kind of a guy you are because you're lying. People who have both feet on the ground, who are steady, who have confidence, who are secure in their place on the planet and in life. They're constantly telling you about what kind of guy they are. That's all you do. You have to tell people what kind of guy you are because you can't show them. <laughs> you can't show anybody confidence. Men are so incompetent and bitchy. That's why I'm starting my own network. The Magic Bean Center for Women's Excellence. Come on over for gross recipes, forest camo fashion, and laughing at little whiners later. Aaron, ya biatch. <laughs> But he did that. He did that the first show too. Remember, like I'm not the kind of guy you want to fuck with. I'm not the guy. It's like you are the guy. It says here, Casey. Are you Casey? Yeah, you're the guy. You are the guy we're looking for. I'm a kind of guy. I'm a nice guy. I'm a stable guy. Okay. Apple love, and then it was. I'm just gonna not pay attention to any of it. And for you guys again. By starting his show out with it. This this sounds like Aaron, you know. You start every show, every day. Does he watch NLO? Are you the bully? If he just never watched NLO, he wouldn't hear a thing. Right, right. That's the point. That's the whole point with all these guys. We're looking for people who react and can't help it. They can't help but react. And, you know, I expect everybody to react to anything happening, but can't let it go. Steel Toe, every day, starts the show with Cope and dealing with the haters and banning a few people and blocking people and saying people in the chat are mean or apologize to April or demanding things. It's like, no, no, no. You, you, do, you are dealing with this. You have to deal with it. So this is the second time in a row he's opening his show with it by saying he shouldn't uh, shouldn't have to uh, answer to or react, but that's what he's doing. W man ten dollars says I agree with what you said earlier. Why does everyone want to rush to violence? We're human beings. Yes, we're animals, but we're supposed to be able to think and talk things out. Yeah, we're supposed to exist on a higher plane of existence. We're supposed to have some bit of enlightenment to control our animal instincts. You're not supposed to lash out your insane feelings all the time. Just keep it together. Keep it together. Um, so he addresses it by saying he's not going to address it. Power move. This dude is unstable, Melton. We're, we're counting on it. He was going to make an example of you. Ooh, you really dodged a bu bullet, p -melt. Yeah, I hope so, you know. You guys to get caught up in it? Because you don't come here for me to 
speak nonsense about stuff like that. So I want to apologize to you. I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed on how I acted. So I mean, you should be. It was cringe as fuck. What's crazy is how you make it worse tonight. Please forgive me and let's go. All right. Can we put it behind us? Thank you. I mean, I wish, but you bring a guy on who literally cucks you in front of your whole crowd. Guys, my next guest is an amazing talent. Not only is he an amazing lawyer, but the guy is funny. He's creative. And uh, you've got to see some of the stuff that he's done uh, on the Internet. Guys, just he can't even introduce his own guests. He's con again. He's got this acid reflux. So every other word he has to. Maybe you shouldn't talk for a living. Seems like you're having trouble digesting. Seems like even your stomach is full of your shit and it's trying to eat you from the inside out. It's like, you ever be at like an airport or, uh, I don't know, some of you, a bus station, uh, a restaurant, a hotel, anywhere where there's they have to make a big announcement or something ever, and you're certain that they've just handed the mic, it's almost like they gathered all the employees in the back like, which one of you knows the least English and has a fucked up accent? You? Great. We're going to need you to do all the PA announcements. And then that person comes on the thing and they're like, <laughs> and you're like, what? That'd be like, th that'd be like this, you know, if they looked around a broadcast studio and they're like, who here can't get two sentences out? without digesting last night's brownie batter casserole constantly in their mouth. Who can't stop burping up the lasagna they had a minute ago? KC, great. Get this guy a mic. Are you smart? Do you have complex thoughts? No? Well, at least you can't get them out. Get in there. Have a show. <laughs> it's like, fuck. It's a good thing you're not saying anything or we wouldn't be able to follow it. Thank God this is just garbled mumbles and digestion noises. Uh, he's got great ideas. Nice guy. You can't tell any. Vince is coming on. You should see some of the stuff this guy's done around the internet. It's like, what a great introduction. What a great way to describe a man. He's got a good bench, too. Guys, it's Vince the lawyer. Wah, the onions are making fun of me. Wah. Yeah. So right out of the gate. Wah, the onions are making fun of me. Wah. Uh-oh. I have you ever had a dream that you um you had your you oh uh, you could you'll do you you wants you you could do so you uh, you'll do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything this is my guitar hero microphone there you go i believe it <laughs> right out of the gate this vince guy's trolling him wah the onions are making fun of me wah that's him imitating kc he's making fun of kc right out of the gate how do you think this is gonna go yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I fell into the trap. It happens. Look, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. So I just wanted to say that out the front. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Doing okay. So before we spoke about the show that you went on complaining about the fat onion, you told me that you never let anyone get the best of you. You never get upset when someone says something wrong. And then I tune it literally ten minutes later. I tune into your show and you're talking about someone. And the way you were talking, I was getting scared. I thought you were talking about me because oh, I had no. spoken about you uh, and what you were doing backstage at the Shuli show. So I was physically getting scared. And then luckily I rewound and I said that I found that you were talking about some like some fat onion guy. I was like, thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> no, Vince, if I had a problem with it, I would have called you and we would have talked it out like gentlemen. Um, so I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry that uh, that whole thing. Happened. But it's it's behind us because we got a lot of cool things going ahead of us, man. So. Um, a lot so. Five minutes into this show, they posit this theory that they have a lot to talk about. And the onion thing is now behind us. 
Oh boy. Lots of stuff to talk about here. And um, yeah, I did say that and, and I made a mistake. I mean, when's the last time you made a mistake? Probably about 10 minutes ago when I was yelling at my wife, but oh, no. don't say, don't say you made a mistake. I went through what the fat onion said. And I was going to say that 95% of what he was saying was actually accurate. Well, I don't even care. Uh, 95% of what the fat onion was saying was accurate? Hello, exactly. I don't care because I I, I, uh, I just am um, not interested. Well, you should. So this guy's. Fucking just coming out of the gate, owning him, and he's sitting there. Casey just cocked on his own show. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And Vince won't let him off. I don't care because he was giving critiques about your show. I don't care. Which I, not, I don't care. I don't care. La 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 la. <laughs> and uh, until until you've become like, you know, until you've done something. Um, look, you got. I don't want to talk about him. Um, yeah, but then, I hope he does well. You, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you say you don't want to talk about him, but he spent a whole half or well, five minutes of your show where I was shitting in my pants. I'm like, shit, I hope he's not talking about me. No, Vince, I wouldn't say that about you. No. That's no, okay. Did, but then he did about an hour and a half critique on your show, which you should watch. Him. No, no, you should watch it because... Night. I don't want to. Vince. He has watched it. Why would he be so mad if he hasn't watched it? He's watched it. He's watching. It. You watching the onions? You're watching the onions. And I don't even want to. It's it's not on my radar. It's like, what do they say? It's punch. it's not on my radar. I just open every show screaming about it. It's not even on my radar, dog. Punching down. It doesn't so matter. I, I listened to it. So I took the time while I was on the treadmill to listen to what he said. It was okay. about an hour and a half, and he critiques what you're doing. And I will say again, 95% of okay, what he's saying. Good. Is that, you can, are you going to let me finish, or are you just going to talk over me? I mean, this Vince guy is a champ. Holy shit, Vince. I don't know you. You were on Shuli trolling the other day. This is trolling. I, I, this guy's great. This guy's great. And apparently him and Casey are going to be doing a show together, like a whole new podcast together. I can't fucking wait. Holy shit. When you have a guy like Vince with this deft hand at trolling, he comes in with this soft angle and an idiot like Casey who thinks he's like in your corner trying to help, but he ain't, he ain't. Uh, I'm going to talk over you because I told you I don't want to talk about it. Well, I want to talk about it. 95% is accurate. If you want to better Vince, your channel, listen. better your show, okay, then listen good. to the, listen how to you the Fat Onion. That's how you feel. Listen to the Fat Onion. That's me. Good. That's fine. We can agree to disagree, okay? But I'm not going to take part in it. So thank you for, you know, at least... Um, I think you had the best intention, but I don't want to talk about it. So, you know, that's that's we're we're at a standstill. So let's move on. Okay, we're at a gym standstill. All right, cool, man. So uh, Vince is a Long Islander like myself, and I bet you didn't know one of the the guys. I just want to do a boring podcast that nobody wants to watch. Can we go back to eight viewers and everybody just ignoring me? The bits I wanted to do was things you didn't know about Vince. Did you guys know Vince was a gym rat? How long you been a gym rat, Mr. Vince? We don't know Vince. Why would we know about his gym habits? Only for the past four years. So I'm going to uh, skip and forward. What made you get into uh, fitness? When he's because, boring, yeah, I'm going to skip. You haven't seen him. He's thick. He is an athlete. So what? What? But I used to own a very little Jewish kid. Got his rent. The thing that like, he was right. So I'm like, I need to get back to the gym. So in college, I couldn't do strong on the, just because you can bench 20 times. You know, uh, there's, no, go ahead. No, no, that's smart. Cause I didn't even know what it was. So I had to go Google what a predicate was. And I forgot, like disagree. One with KC is going to be 
just focused around when Casey finally hooks up with a guy. What? Okay, Casey, watch what this. What he was saying. So they're talking about this new podcast they're going to start, and they're and they're going to talk about how episode one is going to be about how Casey hooked up with a guy. And you're like, what? I also disagree with the approach he's taking, because I you know Dalish, this is this is a very very nuanced opinion, but I like it. This is like another version of Ray and Carlos Danger. Holy shit. Holy shit. Once you see that, you can't unsee it. It really is like that. Only like this guy has self-esteem and Ray doesn't. But yeah, it's just a a more logical guy who's with it wearing a hat, trying to help an out-of-it guy in a crappy studio who thinks he's good at radio and knows what he's doing, even though it's all over the place and scattershot as fuck. This to Shuli and Carl. I said, look, who is the guy that's making fun of, of KC? Because I want to chop it up and make it seem like he's being. Hold on. He's e They were emailing Shuli about me being really mean to KC. But then I listened to it and he was just being mean to KC. I, I could just play it. And I don't know if any if you haven't if you told anyone, but we're we're about to launch our new series. Uh, epi- I got it. Where, when did he say that about emailing Shuli about me? Said, Look, who is the guy that's making fun? Of because he with what he was saying, I also disagree with the approach he's taking. Because I text this to Shuli and Carl. I said, "Look, who is the guy that's making fun of?" So Vince, this guy Vince, the lawyer, whoever it is, is texting Shuli and Carl about me. He's texting Shuli, who is this guy making fun of KC? He's texting Carl from who are these podcasts? Who are these guys making fun of KC? It's like everyone on the internet who's seen him? I don't know. Do you think if I played this to a group of people and didn't say a word, they would all go, what a great show? No, they'd laugh at him like the fucking little cow that he is. Patrick, you big meanie. Dirty Day looks like the birthday blue in your hair today. I don't know what that's about, but just a quick reminder. We're taking birthday cards for Dirty Dalish for our art assignment today. Email them in, Patrick at NobodyLikesOnions.com. Get in your Dirty Dalish birthday cards. There's still plenty and plenty and plenty of time um, to get those into me, okay? You're going to like the way you look. So I can't believe that, Shul- you know, they're texting Shuli about me like, hey, are you friends with this guy? They're probably like, you know, Melton, shut this down. Shut this down now. And Shuli's watching going, let me tell you what Shuli's probably doing. If I was Shuli, I'm watching going, better him than me. Better KC than me. Leave me and Bob out of this. We're top tier whack packers over here at the Shuli Network. We got stuff going on over here. KC's got nothing going on. Keep making fun of KC, Melton. That's what Julie's probably thinking. Of KC, because I want to chop it up and make it seem like he's being really mean to KC. But then I listened to it, and he was just being mean to KC. I, I could just play it. <laughs> and I don't know if any, if you haven't, if you told anyone, but we're, we're about to launch our new series. Uh, episode one with KC is going to be just focused. Look at his face. It's almost like Vince told him, we're going to do a podcast. You have to participate. I don't care if you like it or not. And it's going to be about how gay you are. <laughs> Watch KC. Just around when KC finally hooks up with a guy. Okay. So that's. All- Focused around when KC finally <laughs> hooks up with a guy. Finally. As if they've all been anticipating it. They all think he's gay. Something that, you know, Casey well, that, had. That, that's not the in, entire. Uh, that's not the entire series. That happens to be episode one. Sure, absolutely. I just said episode one. So is now, so so Casey's like, okay, stop trying to make me look gay. Episode one's about the time I was gay. Okay, easy. Looks around, and there's going to be one. I think, and one and two are going to go into when you finally hook up with a guy, and it's ironic because you've been always 
been accused of being gay. I know you're not gay, but this guy happened to trick you into hooking up with you. <laughs> He's talking and about when I went to Alaska and I um, made out with a tranny. So again, you know, as if that makes this sound better, Vince is like, we're going to talk about the time you got, you hooked up with a guy and then, and then Casey has to interrupt him like, okay, he's talking about the time I went to Alaska and hooked up with a tranny. It's like, the, okay. Is it, is that better? By the way, is he, he's wearing a shirt that says gay on it. He's wearing a shirt that literally says G A Y gay on it. I believe. Well, he made out with a guy. And the one thing about Alaska, <laughs> how come he's, he's right? Made, I can't, I can't argue with him. I mean, this is wild. Casey doesn't want to be seen as gay and can't stop telling people about how gay he is. It, what he's saying is true. I listened to it very closely. He hung out with this guy. He was an Asian guy a few times. Uh, Casey <laughs> went to Alaska for chasing a girl. Ironically. Casey's grinning ear to ear and giggling about this memory. Ironically. Yeah. How come you had to spend 10 days in jail there? Because Vince, nobody told me that. Um, I see. I don't know anyone's landline uh, by heart, you know, and I don't know anyone who can take a collect call. So I couldn't reach anybody. Nobody knew where I was. And um, every time uh, I tried to use the phone, I, I couldn't because I didn't know anyone's number. So I'm just sitting here. And so nobody we went, ever told me. We went from he hooked up with a tranny to 10 days in jail and he couldn't get out because he didn't have anybody's number. It's like, um... Did you get arrested for fucking a dude? What's going on? Vince, that, hey, you can have, a, 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 I'm like, well, when I get out of here, I'm going to get a lawyer. A and no one told me that, hey, you know, there's a thing called the public defender. They can come in and they can do all this stuff and get you in touch with somebody. Nobody told me that, Vince. So I sat there wasting away. No one told him that he could get a public defender? <laughs> No one told you you could get a public defender. It's in the Miranda rights. We all know it from watching Ice Cube on, <laughs> from watching Ice T on Law and Order. I didn't know I could get a public defender. <laughs> you know, I've never heard a bigger lie. It's in, everybody knows it. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you. People who don't live in this country know that. Nobody told me that I could get a lawyer appointed to me. Nobody even told me that I could do that. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> um, you know, withdrawing, fr withdrawing from all types of uh, medications that I needed, and it was the worst. All types. 10 days of my life, bud. So let's go back to... A girl breaks up with you, but why does she no, go so to Miranda rights aren't even read to people anymore? You sound dumb as fuck. I mean, that sounds like the most retarded thing a person could ever say. They don't even read Miranda rights to people anymore. It's like, uh, okay. Make up with me, no. Okay, well, then tell us why you went to Alaska. We, this was the woman that I thought, um, you know that one, well, you're married, so you got that one, but. Uh, if someone who's not married, there's that one. Like, I wanted to. So he talks about this guy he hooked up with in Alaska as being the one. The one. To marry this woman, uh, we were actually, like, engaged. And uh, it was happening, like. Um, we were actually engaged? Slow. It, it didn't happen fast. Slowly. Slowly. It happened slow. It didn't happen fast. I mean, this guy's a fucking idiot. It began to uh, dissipate. When you have to and, close your eyes to think of stuff, you know? And get to a different area. And she was in Alaska working for the summer. And normally when we've ever had problems, if I got there and we were, this is the ego in a young man, 
oh, well, if she sees me and uh, we discuss, oh, she's, she's of course, going to want to get back and everything's going to be fine. She's just got to see me. That's this horrible ego thing that young men have. Uh, so a woman in Alaska didn't want to see him, so he thought, I'll just go up there and see her. So that's called a stalker. That's called a stalker. Um, but there's a reason that, you know, uh, things are changing. So I figure if I get there and I speak face to face, and if I just go to Alaska, find out where she works, track down her friends and employee, fellow employees, and tell them why we're meant to be together, then I don't see how she could say no. You know, we talk it out. Um, things can go back to normal, but that's not what happened. Okay, so you get there, and what happens? Um, what happened was after each night where she's, she was supposed to come to my hotel, something always came up and that right there after the first day, now being an old man, knowing what I know, if someone, if you go to Alaska and the other person doesn't want to see you on the first day, if you don't get out, then you have no pride and you are really you're you're really delusional. You can call me Nanerpus, Nanerpus, and guess what? I love Nanerpus. You can call me Nanerpus, Nanerpus, and guess what? I love Nanerpus. I don't even know what to say. So you like met a woman online. This is like ninety day fiance, Alaska edition. Meets catfish. He met a woman online. They never met in person before in his life, but she's the one. She's the one. And they're dating. They were going to get married. They never met. They never met. This guy's a loser. I was on Stern. I was a real radio guy. But you can't meet a girl in the tri-state New York area who's interested in you? You have to go literally to the farthest corner of the earth? To meet a woman who could put up with KC Armstrong? Okay. And then you travel seven hours to fucking Anchorage <laughs> to meet this woman you've never met before yet are sure you're going to marry and she's the one, you delusional fucking sad sack. You sound like a fucking incel. I mean, it. this is nuts. And then she won't come meet you? You've been catfish. She won't come out to the hotel? But I stuck around because I cared about this woman so much. All right, so you go so to Alaska, I, you're calling her, and she's not reciprocating. Yeah. She's not coming over to see you. So she's saying, I'll be over tomorrow, I'll be over tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. So after um, after a while. A while. Four days, whatever, I go up and. Four days. Four days. He flew to Alaska and sat in a hotel jerking his little peen alone for four days saying maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow maybe tomorrow that happened four days for four fucking days you wonder how like people are dumb as fuck see her and uh i walk uh to the place where she she's she's staying and i see her through the window and she won't open the door. I walk to where she's staying and I see her through the window. This is all stalkery. You flew to Alaska. You see her through the window. Again, you know, thinking back. She won't open the door. Sounds like love. This is uh, uh, another sign case. Um, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. I mean, but you have to be smarter than you. <laughs> Four days he sat in a hotel, maybe tomorrow. So what do I do? And I react, which I have a problem. Uh, Go doing ahead. What happens? So, so I bust the door down. So I bust the door down? How dare you? And... Um, yeah, that, that the girls don't really like that. That's not something that they like. So was she working on a crab ship or something else for this? She was selling jewelry. 
Was she working on a crab ship? <laughs> uh, she was selling jewelry. Holy fuck. For for that's what they do. They get they get like good looking girls from California and they, they get them out for and she was great at it. I mean, she, hold on, so somebody, hold on. Somebody's saying I have it wrong. Hold on. What let's get the context here. Um somebody said I had it wrong. And I can't find the chat now. Ah shit. Well, if I got it wrong, I want to get it right, you know. Better watch out he doesn't fall for you, Patrick. He's hiding in your bushes bushes yelling. Um poem <laughs> Uh, it was a hard knock and a weak door, your honor. You have the story wrong. This was his girlfriend in California that worked seasonally in Alaska. Okay. So this was the one, I guess he knew her from Alaska, but they had problems. He thought he was going to marry her. They had problems. She goes up to work in Alaska. He's, tr he can't stop missing her. So he chases her up to, he goes up to Alaska to try to find her. She blows him off for four days. He goes to where she's staying. She won't open the door. He busts the door down. Got it. Do we have it right now? So this is a woman he had already been pursuing. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. She was great at everything. She could do anything. Uh, the woman he's talking about now is not the trans woman. Okay. This, this is a woman. He he was just stalking another woman up to Alaska. Got it. A selling. So when tourists Thank get you. off the cruise ships. I do get a lot of stuff wrong, but people tell me a lot of wrong stuff. So. If that's what it is, thank you. He hasn't met the tranny yet. Be this hot girl who's very bright and who's great at selling stuff. Of course, she's a, a, a star. So um, that's what she was doing up there. I guess she was making money and making a, a life for herself and dist distance, distancing from me, which happens, you know. So I was too dumb to. Uh she was up there making life for herself and distancing from me, which happens. He's making it sound like women do this to him all the time. You know how relationships work. When things don't work out, the girl changes her name and leaves and goes to another state. Happens all the time. I let change happen, and that's why I went up there, and I reacted, well, she's not going to talk to me? Okay, well, here goes the door. Uh, and then the door... <laughs> the door uh, wasn't... Uh, <laughs> the door, the door. He's laughing about breaking down this bitch's door. This is nuts. He's going, he, he. Door went flat. So I broke down a door. He, he, yeah, I kicked the door in and scared the living shit out of a stupid bitch. Well, she's not going to talk to me. Okay, well, here goes the door. Uh, and then the door, <laughs> the door uh, wasn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a retard. Like, I'm not even kidding. This guy is retarded. This is the face a retard makes when they, like, get a gummy worm for the first time. They're like, it's a bug, but it's candy. The door went flat in a matter of seconds. The door was flat in a matter of seconds. I used to be a real emotional, reactive guy. I'm sure glad I don't do that anymore. I'd like to start the show out today saying I overreacted emotionally. <laughs> it's like he, that's why he's going to be great, guys. I'm telling you, that's what I picked up on. He can't not react emotionally. If you're a woman he's in love with, he's knocking the door down. If you're a guy who makes fun of him, he's knocking the door down. Don't get me wrong. I do think this guy will come. <laughs> It'll probably just be on his own shirt. Did I make a oopsie? And, Did you kick uh, it, punch it, or something? Uh, no, I just put a shoulder in it. Oh. Ow! Nice. Maybe that's why my shoulder. Nice. <laughs> nice. So um... he's laughing about breaking a woman's door down. Imagine how terrified this poor girl was. Yeah, so 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 uh, the the uh, the police. Uh, it's a small town, right? You couldn't leave without 
without everyone knowing who, who you were. So the police got me, they put me uh, in jail, and there I stayed for 10 days, Vince. Where were you? Why, 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 why couldn't I, why couldn't I have known you 10 years ago? Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not admitted in Alaska. So first of all, I know it's CKY is can't kill yourself, but like, is that a CKY shirt? Cause to me, it looks like gay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it might be a CKY shirt, which is half a cucky. If it's CK, it's KC, but okay. So you're, why, why are you in jail for 10 days, though? Because they didn't know what to do with me. They're like, they're, this guy doesn't know how to get a hold of anybody. And they kept me in the same spot. For It was it was, it was was horrible. They didn't put me in Gen Pop. They put me uh, in a room full of uh, four people. Gen Pop? It's jail, not prison. I mean, Jesus Christ. And... I got to shower, I think, once. This is like when Chad said he was swatted. It's like, calm down. And, um, oh, it was just, and I, it, the worst part was coming off all those, off of all the drugs. Um, that They didn't put me in gin pop. They put me in with four guys. And after I blew all of them, you know, there were nine days left. That, that I was prescribed. It was so fucking scary, Vince. What were you uh, on I, at the time? Um... Uh, the antidepressant uh, Lexapro, Ritalin, Adderall, and they say that there's no withdrawal from Adderall or Ritalin. That's the big protein sp- shakes. It's a bunch of bullshit. Oh, they say there's no withdrawal from cocaine because that's it's a it's a smaller scale. Poor man's cocaine. Uh, there is such a, a withdrawal. It's crazy. So the um, the um, the anti I kicked the door down because I was coming down off an Adderall high. Um, anxiety. Take that away, and you can die from that. It's a benzodiazepine. Uh, they take that away. Um, the other one was um, uh, for the seizures, uh, from a head injury. Holy uh, shit. Please come try to fight me, you broken fuck. You're like a Mr. Potato Head of disabilities. I mean, I mean, what the fuck? Why would you put this guy in front of a camera and microphone? Um... I it doesn't them. matter. We get uh, it. Um, the, uh, whatever it was, but they just stopped everything cold turkey. And when you're on stuff for 10 or 15 years, 20 years. Wow, he was even on cold turkey, guys. Stop something all of a sudden <laughs> is torture. So, yeah, that, it was not fun, Vince. Were you sleeping in bunk beds? I went so crazy, I just started reaching for dicks. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like in jail. I mean, you got, uh, but this was a. It was a, a four four people, two two uh, bunks, and the only time you know what what time it is is when they bring in uh, your 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 meal. You know what were your bunk mates like? Um, <clears throat> a lot of them were in. I guess meth is very popular up there. And hello, I was in there for for so long that I would see people come in and out, and then if they got if they're a sentence, they got in, in, in trouble a lot, they'd go downstairs into Gen Pop. But I guess they kept me there because it's like, what are we doing with Armstrong? Well, he thinks if you get in trouble, you go to Gen Pop. He thinks that's how prison or jail works. Yeah, everybody starts out in solitary confinement. And if they can't behave in there, we put them in Gen Pop. It's like, what? Like, you couldn't be more backwards with how jail works. <laughs> like, you don't go to Gen Pop for misbehaving. You get pulled out of general population for misbehaving. He's like, yeah, they kept me in my own cell. And then I kept telling them to eat my shit, so they put me in Gen Pop for misbehaving. <laughs> this is what an unscripted 89 IQ sounds like. He's in a holding tank. Oh, nobody knew. Uh, nobody knew to tell me, hey, um, we can get you a lawyer and that maybe they can get a hold of someone in California that you might know. But instead, they just let me rot there. So, yeah, that, that, that kind of sucked. Um, what were you charged with? Yeah, it, it was by the sheet that I had. Um, 
it always looks worse than it is. Uh, but what were we charged with? Um, ah! A bunch of things. Um, the first, the first was criminal mischief, I believe. Uh, second was um, high, like when you, I, uh, I, I saw her phone right there, so I stole her phone. I was so immature. So I stole those. Holy shit! This guy is a psycho. This guy's a psycho. Uh, the phone, just because I guess I wanted to know if she was cheating on me or whatever. Wow! So that cheating I, I, on you? She moved to Alaska to get away from you. You lived in California. You were dating in California. She left. She moved to Alaska. You flew to Alaska. Busted down a woman's door and took her phone to see if she was cheating on you? Oh. Come on. And once you take that, that means you're stopping someone from reporting a crime. Um, you're kidnapping. Holding someone against their will. There's that, and then there was two more. Two more things, kind of like that, uh, I guess, uh, breaking and false imprisonment, breaking and entering. What are we talking about here? Maybe breaking and entering, maybe. I don't know. It's been, uh, it was 2010, so it's been a long time. Well, you time. did break a door and enter it. I've forgotten it. And I've kept my nose clean since. That's how, that is how rap sheets work. You ever been arrested before? I've forgotten it, officer. You're free to go. Yeah, well, I'm just trying to get Your back. record's clean, son. As long as you forget, nobody else remembers either. Carry on, boy. What was the masturbation situation like? Whoa. So Vince out of nowhere goes, what was the masturbation situation like? Speaking of, get your uh, birthday cards in for Dirty Dalish. In 10 days. Ma the masturbation? Yeah, like, uh, do you have to do it in quiet? Can you... So Vince, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a troll or if Vince himself is a creep. This makes Vince almost seem like a creep. Even KC with his tiny little brain is mesmerized by this ask. He's like, so in, when you were in jail, how did you masturbate? <laughs> it's like, first of all, I'm glad you asked it, but it's also very weird. Let's see what he says. You it oh, all. Vince, uh, believe me, bud, you're not thinking of that for the, for the, as a man, you probably don't believe it, but when you're up against so much, you don't know what the hell is going to happen to you and you're withdrawn from all these drugs. That is not something that you're even thinking of. Um, and you know what the weirdest thing is? The whole time I'm in there, I'm like, I'm totally missing her. Like, um, what, you know, uh, how yeah, can I Yeah, you're mentally ill. Right? You're a psychopath. Gotcha. All right. So then how do you actually get out then after 10 days? <laughs> I took a chance on the goodness of people. If you change and our mind. Sometimes it works. There was this nice kid who was in there for a drunk driving. He was in just for the weekend because the courts are closed on the weekends. So I give him my mother's um, phone number and a note to read her onto the phone to tell her where I am. Dear Casey's mom, hello, greetings from Alaska. This is your baby boy, Casey Armstrong, from the Howard Stern program. Currently, I am writing to you from a jail cell in Alaska. What are you doing in Alaska, Casey? You may be asking yourself, and that's a good question, Mama. You remember Lauren? Yeah, well, we're doing great. And uh, I guess the relationship was going so well, she thought we were so secure in our love that she could just pack up everything she owns and move up to Alaska. And I was like, that's a great idea, Lauren. That's a great idea because of the love. And then I, you know, she's, you know, she seems too busy to talk to me. So I thought I'd... Uh, book a flight on the next air, air airline tri on the air, air program up there, and I, you know, and then I was gonna meet her, take her to dinner. She didn't want to see me. She didn't want to talk. I guess because of the love. 
So I go over to her apartment. I just break her door down, say, what's the deal? Give me a phone. What's his name? I ought to kill you. You know, love. And now I'm in a jail cell. Please send $15,000 for bail and some of those gummy worms that I love. And um, how to get a hold of the jail and how to talk to me because I couldn't call out and, you know, ask her for anybody. I, I called uh, my boss. I was working for Max Muscle at the time. Um, but that's not. I was working for Max Muscle at the time. Sounds like a moving company. Are you moving either locally or across state lines? Call Max Muscle today. Four of these juice heads will show up at your place, steal any contraband in your medicine cabinet, and help load your big screen TV onto a truck. If any luck, you'll see them again soon. If not, you got insurance, right? Max Muscle. Hey, do you want to see the rest of this Friday Mountain in the Morning show? You can. All you have to do is head over to nobodylikesonions.com slash overdose now and join. Use promo code SECRET and save 10%. That's right, only 9 bucks a month. You'll get access to everything we've ever done at Nobody Likes Onions all the way back to 2005. The stuff we haven't lost anyway. Our back catalog, it's all yours to peruse at your leisure over at nobodylikesonions.com slash overdose. It's the best way to support the show, the best way to get access to everything and anything we do here, including the rest of this program, okay? Where we go after Casey Armstrong and we look at Dirty Dalish's birthday cards, okay? You're also going to get 15% off any of the merchandise in the store. That's the hats. That's the shirts. You're going to love it. Head over today to nobodylikesonions.com slash overdose, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for supporting the show.